Hello everybody, um, I hope you can hear me and I hope it works. I want someone to tell me that the sound does work because I screw up sound on this all the goddamn time. So make sure you tell me in Twitch chat if you can actually hear me uh, because that would be rather embarrassing if you cannot. Hello. It's the first person sound. It's Tibill. Of course it's Tibill. Uh, someone ban him. Uh, hello, I'm Ithaca Hawk. Uh, I'm joined by a star-studded cast of people. Uh, I've got uh, Disc, uh, Disc Read Error uh, up the top, uh, joined with uh, Rain Chocolate or Chocolate Rain, depending on your preference of order. We've got Star Miz, uh, Mizier uh, down the bottom, along with Dwagon Omer, and of course uh, Geeky Decorum, aka the artist formerly known as Rathnon Domitras of EVE Online. And we are going to play some D&D. &D. Um, there's not a huge amount to... Uh, to preface all of this, really, it's uh, it's just a bunch of nerds playing some D and D, and we made it even more nerdy by using uh, this uh, map of New Eden, a fantasy map of New Eden, uh, which I drew over the last year and a bit, uh, and then uh, Rick Javix very kindly uh, coloured in and made it look pretty cool, and it felt like we had to do something with it, so we decided to do uh, Dungeons and Dragons. So. That is that is entirely everything. Uh, does everyone want to say hello, introduce yourselves, or say anything? Uh, like a character, or just a person? <laughs> just your people. Like we'll do characters later when we start. Like I think most people are here familiar with everyone, right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, by the way, uh, everyone on the playing characters, um, they have already done uh, one session each with me. Um, in small groups, so uh, they did level one with me in what I like to call session 0.5s. Uh, so um, some of them know each other and some of them don't, which should be interesting. Uh, and they're starting at level two, which definitely makes things better. Uh, so um, without further ado, I guess we should get started. Yeah. Cool. Let's go. So our story takes place in a land known as New Eden. In a long time ago, before the great cataclysm that shattered the old lands, a number of settlers set out in search of new, fertile lands and with room to grow, unburdened by the generations of escalating war. A new continent was discovered, previously recorded by no cartographers, and those first settlers took root in a sheltered vale they named Genesis Cove. Travel between the old and new worlds escalated over the following generations as an inevitable scramble for land and wealth took place. As the old lands grew more and more ravaged, settlers and refugees flocked to New Eden until one day they simply stopped coming. Trade ships ceased to arrive and eventually ships that set out from New Eden returned, bringing news of the absolute and utter destruction of the old world. In modern times, New Eden has evolved into a prosperous land dominated at its core by four great empires locked in a perpetual cold war. Each of the empires most likely capable of destroying any other if they wanted to, but at a cost so great they'd inevitably be destroyed in turn by the remaining. Decades of uneasy peace intermixed with occasional skirmishes has resulted in fortified borders and endless backstabbing attempts. For the general populace, however, decades of peace between the empires simply means no conscription into the endless wars, like in the old world. In the arid deserts of the east lives independent nomadic tribes, known occasionally to form up under a great can and raid out with their borders. However, not much has been heard from them of late. Up north in the cold, rocky islands, stories of dragons and great riches are told. Those who venture up there report many pirate fleets roaming the trade routes between the remote settlements and mountainous tribes of warlike folk who don't take kindly to outsiders. Down south, a great war rages. The once strong, independent Delvian Empire has been besieged by invaders seeking to take the gold-rich lands from a warlock emperor labelled as corrupt. In a land of empires and kings, warlords and demons, monsters and miracles, our tale begins in much simpler locales. We join the sleepy town of Lashkai, nestled at the foot of the great mountain range that separates and protects the Holy Amar Empire from the Theocracy of Providence and there's a buzz in the air. As a warm autumn sun is just rising over the peaks to the east, there's hustle and bustle as stalls and stands are erected for the harvest festival. Merchants with carts loaded with wares move quickly while runner boys dash to fetch tools and deliver messages. 
By the time the chill morning air has had warmth breathed into it by the sun, the streets are beginning to fill with all manner of peoples and families, many with coloured streamers. Music begins to emanate into the air as bards and buskers take up residence on street corners, filling the air with cheery tunes and upbeat rhythms. The delicious smell of fresh hunted meat and just picked vegetables roasting mixes with spices and the sharp morning air as the distinctive sound of kegs of ale having their taps hammered into them rings out over the laughter of children and general murmur of activity. The grassy meadow, just off the main square, is filled with stalls and criers attempting to attract the crowd to various goods and games of skill and chance. And off to the side of that meadow, packing up bedrolls and preparing for the day ahead, we see three figures. A fiery red-headed girl with an armoured breastplate and chain shirt assists a tall blonde man with his armour, while an elven woman wrapped in her cloak to stave off the cool air from their shaded camp watches on. A young lad is darting from makeshift camp to makeshift camp. He runs up to the elven woman and cries, Have you heard? Have you heard? Free breakfast at the Broken Drum! Get it quick! And dashes off. So. So, free breakfast there. Want to say no to that? I mean, can we afford to say no to that? We're, uh, we're not exactly travelling heavy yet. Well, as long as you keep uh, saying no to rewards, then you're not going to be able to afford breakfast. Are you? I mean, the knight's code is really clear. The code says, don't kill hostages, don't take monetary rewards. Easy. Are you implying something? I think you'll find I am. So it does make me question why you even stick around with me. You did uh, what you promised me, and uh, I only seem to create trouble for you. Well, not just trouble for me, trouble for everyone. But if I can uh, spare the world, if I can keep the peace, if I can bring you off your uh, clearly false path, then, uh, then I will be doing my job. I'll be serving my court as a as I'm supposed to be. Very well. I I don't mind having a free, uh, even two free guards at my service. So you hear the the, the lad running uh, to some of the other camps that are still packing up and telling them the same thing, and you see people starting to pack up a little bit quicker and make their way towards the broken drum, which is just across from the entrance to the uh, to the festival. What are you doing? We're heading to breakfast. Good wise decision. So you enter the broken drum. Uh, it's as it was the other day uh, when you were there. There's um, quite a few people uh, around today. Um, and it is bustling uh, with both town folk and all manner of visitors. Uh, Gerlinde, the mid-thirties barkeep with her fire red hair who you saw last time, hurriedly rushes um, through the door from the kitchen uh, and shouts at the young blonde lad from previous, Jonah, as he jumps from table to table, setting down... Uh, Plates of breakfast meats and cheese and bread. Uh, he looks a bit rushed off his feet today compared to when you saw him the other day, but that's because someone's offering out free breakfast. Uh, Galinde this time is accompanied um, by a dwarven man uh, who's helping her. Uh, you didn't see him last time. She sees you enter and she recognizes you from the previous day and she's like, ah, you here for the free breakfast, I? Grab a table, any table. We'll be around as soon as possible, all right? Breakfast is free. Drinks you have to pay for. Thank you. So there's there's plenty of uh, it's busy, but there's there's definitely some free tables uh, which you could easily make your way to and, and sit down. Well, we'll go for a free table then. Sure. So you head over to a table uh, towards the centre of the room. Um, it's clearly some people have just left. There's still some empty plates on it from uh, before. They look like they've been polished off. Uh, some people enjoyed their breakfast. Uh, and as you go to sit down on that table, uh, the dwarven man uh, comes round and he quickly gathers up all of the empty plates and he disappears off into the back as well. 
Meanwhile, upstairs in their respective private rooms, uh, three other people are waking up. They've just finished getting themselves dressed. Um, they stayed in the inn last night. One chose to stay in the dorms in a hammock. And he climbs down from his hammock and we see this um, figure with horns coming out of his head and a strange grey skin. He gathers up his belongings and he flicks his hood up to cover the horns and he walks out of the dorm. I wonder where the other ones have got to. They should be up by now. So what do you want to do? Uh, I'll go knock on the doors. That you can. And um, let's say you, you knock on the door you know belongs to Snow, the, the bard companion uh, who you met the other day. Snow, you hear a knocking on your door. Well, I'm already dressed, so I open the door. Hey, how are you? Top of the morning to your latter. You ready yet? Yeah, I'm real hungry. Where's the other guy? Let's go get some food. He's probably snoring his ass off as usual. Oh my god, classic Tazros. Let's go get him. And I, my storm or snow walks over to Tazros's door and pounds on it. What's oh, up? Just... Who's there? Tazros, it's snow. And see, what do you want? We're, we're we're hungry. Let's go get some food. Get your lazy ass out of bed, boy. I will open the door and just uh, walk out like. At least get me some ill. I need my morning ill. The ill's downstairs. Get dressed. Move your ass. Um. I don't wear that much clothes. <laughs> anyway, so I would just go like this, and I will just walk towards the stairs and walk down. Cool. So as you as you come down the stairs, um, you see an inn, which is filling up rapidly. Um, from from the night before. Seems a lot more people are here today and there's a lot of hustle and bustle. Um, at this point now there's not very much room left uh, as people are still coming in rapidly through the door and making their way to fill up spaces. Even the bar has people sitting at it. But there is one table um, which is quite large but only occupied by three people. Uh, there's a red-headed woman in a breastplate and chainmail. There's a, a man, uh, tall, blonde and some would say handsome. And then a slightly mysterious elven figure, uh, all sitting down, and they, they appear to be waiting for some breakfast. Alright, so Snow saunters over to the table. Hey, are you guys, like, taking this whole table, or can we sit here, me and my friends? I just look at Snow with a surprise on my face. And who are you? Hi, my name's Snow. I'm from Amamake. Haven't you heard of me? I'm a really notorious bard. Anyway, can we stay here? Sure. Alright, thanks. Hey, Steve, we can stay here! They said we can stay here! As she screams across the bar. I heard you see a few people it. sort of look up um, at, at the, the sound of this strange-looking uh, figure. It appears to be a short, uh, dumpy, white cat figure. Uh, Tabaxi, some know. Um, but not many people have seen tabaxis, They're, the people know of them, but they're certainly unusual enough that when you walk down and start shouting snow, some heads are turning and uh, some people are staring, especially younger children uh, who are looking at you and sort of like tugging on the, the arm of their parents and sort of pointing uh, sort of in wonder and amazement. The stairs don't bother uh, snow by any means. She's quite used to it being a bard. So Galinda comes uh, around at this point and uh, she points at the three that have just come down and she's like, Breakfast for you as well, remember? Breakfast is free, ale you have to pay for, any drinks you pay for, but you're up for breakfast, I one, two, three, and that's you three as well. Yours are just coming by the way, love. And she waits to see if you respond. Yes, yes. it's uh, up yeah, here. Yes, uh, he is as well, and you see that uh, the, the dwarven man who you met the other day uh, is helping Gerlindy. Yesterday he was just kind of around behind the bar, but this time he's around, like, dropping plates off and stuff as well. Can you get me some ale, like last time? Because that was amazing. Ah, uh, yeah, no problem. So that's six breakfasts, one ale. Any other drinks? Milk, please. And Water, a milk. If you have it, please. Water. Yeah. Water. All right. It is, it is a harvest <laughs> festival day, you know? Like, you can celebrate. I can't convince you to take some ales. Yeah, ale yeah. for me, please. Alright, two ales, two ales, two waters, and a milk. Aye? Cool. And she disappears off. A 
So, so anyway, who are you guys? The... What? <laughs> Sorry, go on, go on. Are you here for the Heart Festival as well? Well, there was changes that brought uh, me here. We're, and these uh... two are my lovely guards, apparently. We're passing through. We're uh, we're on a quest. What quest? What kind of quest? Uh, we're in the business of lifting curses. Do you guys know anything about curses or what's aren't a curse? Those... Yeah, aren't those like a made-up story parents tell their kids? I mean, a lot of them are. <laughs> it's uh, everything is a made-up story parents tell children until it happens to you. Are you saying you're cursed? Um, yes. At this uh, point, I um, take my hood down and uh, reveal my tiefling horns. Um, despite my appearance, uh, I'm afraid not. I mean, between the horns and the fur and the guy that's not dressed, you guys uh, seem like the the traveling sort. Almost more circus performer than a civilian. I mean, I mean, Snow gives a mean performance. I'll give that to her, but uh, we're definitely not circus folk. Uh, that's a shame. So as you're talking, uh, the young lad Jonah, uh, he comes across. He's got like this wooden tray uh, with a bunch of uh, plates all kind of stacked up, almost on top of each other, and he drops off six of them uh, in front of you. And he's like, "I'll be back with your drinks." And he disappears quickly. Uh, so each of you gets a plate with uh, some hunks of bread, some bits of cheese, and some uh, some cool dry me dried meat. It's not fancy. It's a, a standard tavern breakfast, but it is free, which is very nice and probably tastes much better because of that. I will dig in straight away. Same. That you can do, and it tastes <laughs> average at best. Um, not long after that, uh, Jonah comes back with your various drinks. Um, he is carrying about eight drinks, and he's like, uh, two ales, he drops off two, and he's like, uh, milk, that must be for the cat, drops it there, uh, water, don't know why, and then he's like, right, um, I'll be back in a little bit for your money, uh, it is uh, it's five silver pieces for the ale, uh, the milk is three silver pieces, and the water is free, okay, bye-bye, and he disappears off, and he drops off a few more things. So aside from lifting curses, what are you in town for? Uh, we've been running errands. Um, That's fairly vague. Had a had notice of uh, some farms in trouble, uh, beasts in the wood, rats in the walls. Were uh... and some mysterious white demons. Oh my god! We got attacked by a white demon. Was it, like, Maybe. creepy looking with, like, long fingers and all that? Maybe it mistook you from one of its own. No, because it definitely killed me. It was not very nice. Yeah, it tried to eat her. Bit her half and half. Where did you encounter this demon? Uh, one in a barn, one in the forest. Oh, you've seen more than one? We've only found the one so far. We killed both, if it helps. Uh, we killed ours as well, but uh, I'm glad we didn't meet more than one. They're not particularly nice. Super no. rude. So at this point, um, uh, Jonah comes back and he's uh, ready for your money. He's just like, his hands out, like, sort of like, yes, like, uh, there was five silver for you, three for you, uh, five for you. Um, yep, please, quickly. Bit busy here. Oh. Snow pays him. I'll pay him as well while continue eating, like, chicken in his hand. <laughs> well, I have stuff in my face. He's like, yep, thank you very much, have a good day. And uh, he runs off, and um, uh, not long after that, actually, uh, the front door of the inn opens, um, as it's been doing most of the day. But this time, um, Snow, uh, you see um, a man you recognise as Tavom, um, who was the owner of the cart the other day that you helped. And he comes in and he kind of looks around and he spots you guys and he comes over and he comes up to you, Snow, and he's like, Good morning. Uh, I'm, I'm glad to see you again. I'm, I'm glad you're, uh, you're looking a lot better than last I saw you. Oh, 
hey Tavon, how are you? What brings you here? Uh, well, I I heard that there was a a cat person in in the inn, and I figured, well, <laughs> I only know one cat person. It must be Snow. Uh, so I thought I'd come say hello. And oh, uh, he goes into his like pouch, and he's like, and I've I sold some stuff this morning uh, to some other merchants, and um, I've got he counts out nine gold pieces. And he's like, I want I want you guys to have this to kind of cover any. Um, it, it, the, 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 like the healer's costs from from the other day because I appreciate what you did, but I know paying for healers is really expensive. So so please please please. Oh, hey, well thank you, Tavon. We appreciate it. Let us know if you need any more help. Yeah, I, I mean I can't believe that these. And he looks at you and like sort of like goes to like pull your fur kind of slightly apart. Like he's like, I can't believe that the wounds they've like almost healed completely. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's great how much magic does. I forget how my character got healed, but I know she slept and was recovered. <laughs> and he um, he lowers his voice a little bit and he kind of looks around and he says really quietly, so pretty much only you can hear Snow. He's like, never seen nothing like that before. It was that milky white skin, it's unnatural. Do you have any idea what they were? So Snow, completely oblivious that he's whispering, goes, actually I have no idea, but these guys fought some too and they say they're demons. Have you ever heard of a demon before? I've never seen one. He, he sort of recoils a little bit. He's like, a demon? And he looks at you guys and he sees this heavily armoured man and a, an elven woman. He's like, uh, I don't know any demons. I, I, uh. He's like, oh, I, I, I better be going. I, I, come, come say hello at, at the festival if, uh, if, you're, if you're passing by. Bye-bye. You -bye. kind of like, nods politely and sort of backs away and then turns and walks out the door pretty quickly. Yeah, so that's our friend Tavon. We helped him earlier. He's apparently a blacksmith and came to town to sell things. Uh, Snow introduces, introduced him pri previously, I guess, since he ran off already. Seems quite uh, skittish for a blacksmith. Ah, he's Have you seen his horse spin it? That was like... Boof. Yeah, the horse almost got eaten as well. We had to uh, fight off that demon to save it. Yeah. Uh, oh. Well, I'm finished with my breakfast. I don't know about you guys, but uh, I need to go do some shopping before we attend the festival. Well, I'm not really in a rush. I well, wanna uh... get... I'll go with you, Siege. I want to go play some music and make money. <laughs> oh, see, do you want to go to that shop? <laughs> uh, no, not that shop, Dwight. Uh, Tazros, but uh, uh, there are other things I want to buy. But uh, I'm not surprised that uh, Snow wants to go and uh, set up in the main square again. She made quite a pretty penny the other day. By the way, Snow is uh, if... festival as well. More people. Snow, if you and Kanda are halfling uh, bad called uh, Basta, then say hi from me. All right, we'll do. What's your name again? Hasana Niado. Hi, right. nice to meet you, Harzana. So, what are you doing? So, the three of us will head out into town. Uh, myself, Taz, and Snow. And um, I know exactly where Taz wants to go, but uh, I want to go to the blacksmiths. Okay, so you can do. Um, you head out into Lashkai once again. So Lashkai, uh, as you are now relatively familiar with, uh, you are in the Broken Drum, which is in the south of the, the city. Um, and where do you say you're heading to? See? Uh, the Blacksmith. Yeah. So the Blacksmith is just across the, uh, the river, uh, on the left. So you head across the river, and sure enough, it's open for business. It's festival day. He started a little bit earlier than yesterday. Tazros, I'll catch up with you in a minute. I'm just uh, going to buy something to uh, stop me getting shot so often. Sure, yeah, I'll wait here and then we can go to the special <laughs> shop. <laughs> okay, bear with me a second. Um, so I'm going to wander into the shop and I'm going to find the shopkeeper and... Yeah, so you, yeah, you do. Uh, he's there. He's working. He's uh, the same guy yesterday, Arnan Copperhearth, as you knew, uh, the buff dwarven man. And he's covered in sweat already from the heat of his uh, his furnaces. He's 
hammering away at something on the on the anvil. Morning, Anon. How are you doing today? Morning. Can I can I get you anything? I'm a bit busy. It's going to be a busy day. And he's hammering. Uh, yeah, I'm just after a basic shield, if you don't mind. All right. Yeah, shields. One second. And he goes and he pulls out a couple of uh, of shields. He's like, "Here you go. Ten gold. Pick you pick pick any of them. They're all pretty much the same." Uh, I'll just pick one of the round ones, thank you. That'll do nicely. And uh, ten gold, you said. Ten gold, I. Uh, that'll do nicely. Yeah. Uh, hand over ten gold. Thank you very much. He puts it in a little uh, pouch and he goes back to hammer. He's like, "Have a good day. Enjoy the festival." I'll do my best. You too. And uh, I'll wander out and uh, rejoin Tazros. So okay. Taz, you said everything. I uh, have. Yeah. I just. Uh, I figured with all the arrows hum thumping into me from those bandits, I'd uh, pick up a shield. Uh, why, why do you need a shield for that? Just stand in the way and they will hit you and they will like, ploof. Uh, I just put as much as I can between me and the arrows. Uh, this leather armor doesn't turn away much. Alright, that's fair. Um, where, where did Snow go? Well, she's probably caterwauling in the main square again. Yeah, so Snow went to both the um, the festival area and the main square to determine which had more people to determine where she would set up her little stand to make play music. So the festival is still setting up, but there's still quite a few people there, including um, a couple of bards already playing. And in the main square, it's the same. Quite a few people um, are, are milling around and making their way across. There's some stands set up. Uh, there's a couple of bards almost in every corner at this point. The ones that have gotten up early uh, to guarantee themselves getting a spot on the square, because this is a prime day for busking. Uh, so they are all there and ready. Uh, you do see a couple of carts trundling through the square, heading towards the bridge which leads across towards the festival ground. Uh, a bunch of them are loaded with barrels, looks like ale, another one's got some uh, some empty cages and shackles, uh, another one's got like you know, sort of vegetables and things like that, and they're all just heading towards the festival. Alright, so I'm going to go to the festival and set up to play. Okay, so if you're heading back that way, you pass uh, Siege buying his shield, and you head back towards the broken drum now at the same time um sir Ta uh, sir uh sir tristan and harzana did you go with these people or did you stay at the broken drum i think we stayed at the broken drum yeah okay. there was free food when you when you have no money free food is uh you know eat so, until you throw up so once you finish your food and the others have disappeared at this point and gone off to do their thing. You finish the, your food, you finish anything that you were drinking, and uh, there's quite a few people still in the, the broken drum, and um, the the landlord, um, the dwarven man who uh, Tazros referred to is Avamir, uh, comes across and he's like, if you've had your breakfast, uh, if you wouldn't mind, um, we're trying to get more people in, because uh, obviously we make a lot of money on the drinks, so... If you're buying more drinks, feel free. But otherwise, um, if you wouldn't mind, could we have the table? Okay, we'll find another place. Yeah. Thank we'll, you. Uh, Thank you for the food and the drinks. Well, if you're looking for another place, there's plenty of stuff uh, at the festival itself. There's people selling um, uh, ales and things and fruits and stuff from all over the place. I recommend it. You know, go, go check that out. That Thank you very good. much. So, if you leave now, are you leaving? Yep. Yeah. Superb. So, as you walk out the front door, you see um, a strange looking cat woman who you had breakfast with, accompanied by a bare chested uh, fellow man and a tiefling looking fellow walking across the bridge as well. Now, what's all your passive perceptions? 13. Nine. Ten. Uh, ten. No, twelve, sir. I'm trying to find it. Below your little checks or whatever. It's also ten plus perception. Oh, it's a uh, fifteen. Okay, so uh, snow and. Uh, Hazara, uh, you see um, just across from the entrance to the, the broken drum, there's um, an old man. He looks quite frail, early 80s. He's got shoulder length grey hair and milky clouded white eyes. Um, he's kind of fumbling around. He's on, he's on the ground with his hands and knees. He's fumbling around. 
um, looking looks like he's looking for something in in the dirt, and uh, not far away, three four feet to the side, uh, leaning against the building is one of the uh, Lashkai town guards, sort of watching on. I go over to him. Snow Snow po follows Hazara to going. Hey, what's happening over here? So he he's like, uh, uh, I lost my ring, and he's looking around in the uh, in the ground. Oh, we can help you find it. Oh, th thank you. It's an old heirloom. And he's scrambling around in the ground. And those with the, the high passive perception, you see the guards are leaning back, arms crossed, and he's smirking. So Snow <laughs> points at the guard goes, Hey, sir, did you see where this man's ring went? You were standing here the whole time, right? He says, Nope, didn't see a thing. Can I uh, do a deception check, see if he's lying? It would be an insight check, but yeah, sure. Okay, I got 420. Seems like he's telling the truth. You know, why would this guard have uh, any reason to lie to you? Alright, Snow thanks him and then uh, helps this old man look for his ring. Okay, so investigation from you, Snow, while you, when you're looking for him. I'm also looking. Investigation then. So um, you you look around. You're both on your hands and knees. Everyone else is kind of watching at this point um, as you're just crawling around with this old man. Uh, but you don't find anything. Whilst this is going on, can myself and Taz have uh, wandered over? Mhm. Mm okay. I'd like to try and pickpocket the guard because I don't trust him. Sure. So. Um, that would be a sleight of hand. Now, <laughs> perfect. So you come up behind this guard. Now he's sort of leaning against this uh, this building and he's watching on. And because of that, he's quite distracted. He's clearly focusing on, on these people with this old man. And he doesn't see this tiefling man come up behind him. And you reach your hand in. He's got this pouch on his, on his belt. And it's not been tied shut properly. It's a little bit open. So you're able to just get your hand into it. And you feel around, and there's a couple of coins and things like that in it, and you also feel a ring. Okay, so I'd like to take the ring, but also leave a cheese packet behind. Yes, you can do. So you successfully uh, have this ring. It's a little gold ring with a blue gemstone in the top. Okay, so once I have that, I'm going to wander pass snow and pretend to fall over and then make a cry of surprise and uh, hold out the ring. Well, that would be performance then. Bollocks. <laughs> oh, boy. It's not a difficult one. So, um, Snow and uh, Hazana, while you're on the ground, you see um, uh, Siege kind of wander by and then he seems to trip over a piece of dust or something. Like, it's not really much there, but somehow he tripped and he falls and he rolls and he comes up and he's holding this gold ring with a little blue gem on the top. I believe this belongs to you, sir, from what I've heard. Holding out uh, the old uh, man. He's like, his hands like kind of touching your arm, like cause he's trying to like feel up to it. And he's like, is it? He's, he's, he's touching it. Yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, sir. And um, those with the high pass possession, so Hazana and Snow, you notice that the guard looks a little bit surprised. So Snow calls him out. Well, guard, look, we found it. Good thing we were here to help him. Otherwise, we wouldn't have gotten it. Uh, good, good job. Good job, citizens. Yeah, I'm going to turn to the, uh, the guard and just uh, wink at him. Thank you, laddie. Appreciate your help. The old, the old man sort of frailly gets back up to his feet, like he's like holding his back, he's like, and he, he gently tries to slip the ring back onto his finger. And you can see there's like a divot of where a ring, you know, someone who's wore a ring for gener almost not generations, but a long, long time, has that divot in their in their finger. He's got one, and he, the ring sort of looks like it struggles a bit, and it just slips straight onto it, and he, he looks quite pleased. Now, as as this is happening, he's he's saying to you, like, oh, "Thank you so much," uh, and he's sort of t trying to touch your face. Uh, do you let him? Seeing that he's blind or partially sighted, I'm gonna stand there and let him do it because he's not a threat. So he, he, he's like touching your face, and then he's his fingers sort of one of his fingers brush your horns, and he's like, 
Oh! What is yeah. this? I'm a tiefling, unless you haven't noticed. I'm a, uh... Oh, I danger. cannot see, so I... I, I... Uh, that's fine. Please, where where am I? You in the town of Lashkai? How I did know, you get I here? I know if that. You're not sure. I know that. But where? You in the main square? Oh. Fairly close to the blacksmiths. And do you know you your way home from here, or do you need a hand? You hear a man uh, shouting, "Dad!" And this man comes running across, and he's sort of um, looks, you know, forties or so, and he runs up to the old man. He's like, "Dad, Dad!" Are you okay? What happened? Where? Wh why are you here? I just wanted to go for a walk. Get off me, boy! And he's like, oh, Dad, you can't be out just now. It's too busy, and you you get lost. And he turns to you guys like, Thank you. Uh, I hope he's not causing any trouble. No trouble at all. Just uh, I hope he's all right. Uh, thank you. Um. He looks around and he looks over. He sort of looks over you like that, like towards the festival. And he's like, um, "Listen, and by the way, this um, siege um, and snow and Tazros, you uh, know this guy, by the way. Uh, this is Lorenzo Vellini, um, whose farm uh, or farmhouse you were at the other day, um, who had a rat problem. So he's he obviously when he runs up, he then oh, it's it's you." Uh, I don't suppose you know you know where I live. Um, my 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 father he's supposed to be uh, being looked after by my brother Giorgio. I don't suppose you could um, you could just take him home. Uh, like obviously with the rat problem, they were staying in the barn uh, around back. I don't suppose you could just take him back, um, drop him off. Giorgio should be there. Uh, I've really got to go to the festival. Like I've really got to go. Lorenzo, oh. no offence, but uh, we've already helped you with your rat problem. I think we've done enough for the day. Uh, uh, he sort of stammers a little and he's like, Oh man, um, listen, if I don't get there, I will lose um, five gold. So can I just give you like one gold, please? Just just to, to walk my father back. Uh, Giorgio will be there. Just drop him off. No problem. I, I re Please, please. I can't right, leave him by right, himself. All right, all right. We'll do it. Thank you, thank you. And he hands one gold uh, to Siege, and he's like, uh, enjoy the festival, have a great day. And he runs off, like, running <laughs> towards the festival. S Snow turns to Siege and goes, so Siege, where'd you find the ring at? Was it really on the ground? Uh, I'll tell you later, Snow, once we're out of earshot of uh, this reprobate, say, glancing at the guard. Snow turns and glares at the guard and flicks her tail, you know, like a cat does. Right, right, Taz, are we uh, going to that shop you wanted to go to? Uh, can we? Well, I'm not quite sure who you're going to buy for this time, because uh, I know what to expect, but uh, we can certainly go there. I mean, it's always a surprise what you get there. At least <laughs> last time it was like... Certainly. I don't know what it was, but it was magical. <laughs> Snow, so are you going to stay here and, uh, and uh, perform, or are you going to join us? Well, we gotta take this guy back to Georgia or whatever his name is, right? We'll do that on the way. Like, you, you stay here if you want to. I know you are uh, looking at making a pretty penny today. Yeah, if um, as long as you guys guarantee this man makes it back safely, I'll, I'm gonna go perform. Make us. We've some already money. been paid. We'll take care of it. Don't worry about it. Okay. Snow's so gonna head towards the square. Okay, so Snow walks up towards the square. Um, so Tristan and uh, Harzana, you've obviously seen all this happening in. Uh, what what are you doing? Yeah, help the old man. Okay, so um, you don't know where he lives, um, but it was quite clear from the way Lorenzo spoke to Snow Siege and Tazros that they know where he lives. Yeah, we will make our way uh, up to uh, the, the the road. I'll do the. Towards the uh, Silent King Tavern, and then the first house on the left. Yep. So uh, this house on the left. Yep. So this is the one that you were at the other day. So the four of you um, make your way with the, this old man. He walks pretty slow. He's an old man, and uh, you can make your way uh, towards the farmhouse. The farmhouse is closed um, from the other day, and uh, Lorenzo said to you uh, that his father and his brother were staying in the barn out back because of the rat problem. 
So did I hear correctly when you said they had rat problems? You heard correctly. Yeah. Mean... We were here previously and uh, there's uh, they were uh, we were asked to clear out some rats in the basement. It was uh, an interesting encounter. Well, we saw that the post on the board as well. Yeah, it's ideal. We had that planned for today. Ah, well, uh, sorry to say we'll beat you to it. You'll have to uh, stop snoozing so much. Well, it's okay. We had another job that earned us quite well. Ah, they're all fair in love and war then, eh? Let's go and find Giorgio. Yeah, I hope he didn't get, like, a rat problem like these giant rats like this time. Well, I'm sure you'll take care of the mate has. Well, you had a giant cat. <laughs> we, we may have had a giant cat, but, uh, yeah, when the rats are the same size as a tabaxi, it's uh, kind of concerning. Giant cat solutions for giant cat problems. <laughs> Indeed. Right, let's wander through and uh, try and find this barn then. So the f the farm that you're in, um, Siege and Tazros, you know the, the, the farmhouse. It's the same one that you went the other day. And around the back of it um, is a small farm which stretches sort of long and thin uh, because there's a couple of farms all side by side and they all sort of they spread out almost like that away from the, the city itself. Uh, they're right on the, on the very edge of, of the town. And um, there's a couple of fields, there's some pumpkins that are being grown, there's uh, uh, looks like some corn up the back towards the barn and a couple of rows of, of wheat and some of them have been harvested and some of them haven't. It's harvest time, uh, so these things are still ongoing. Um, but yeah, this is where you are. So I'm going to yell out uh, the brother's name, Giorgio, and uh, see if he I get any response knowing he's in the area and not being quite sure where the barn is. Okay, so um, you yell it out, and then um, you, I guess, sort of listen using your tiefling ears, um, but you don't hear any response. There's a barn uh, at the back of the farm. Oh, maybe he's having a nap as well. Um, do you guys want to join me in the barn? Yeah, let's go and uh, knock the door down. Maybe just knock on the door instead of knocking it down, ladder, eh? Okay. Yeah, don't break anything you can't pay for. So uh, the doors are closed, but they're they're like a jar, as in like they're loose, so they're not like locked or anything like that. So you can quite easily um, push the doors open, um, and you see uh, a barn. Uh, there's a bunch of like scrape marks where like uh, um, uh, a cart probably was. Uh, which is now just to the outside of the barn and at the back of the barn um, you see lying uh, looks like he's asleep um, a man uh, but the same age as Lorenzo and um, he looks like pretty rough his clothes are kind of ragged um, he looks unshaven he's asleep um, and he actually has some uh, some like splashes of blood on his clothes well that doesn't look encouraging I want to walk up to a mic. Can I yell okay. out Giorgio again? Yeah, so you yell out as Tazros walks up to him and he like starts awake. He's like, ugh. And he like kind of rolls over and he sees you guys. And he's like, ugh. And he scrambles to his feet. He's like, who, who are you? Who are you? Are you Giorgio? Are you Giorgio? Yes. What are you doing in my barn? Dad? He sees he's, uh, his father uh, with you and he kind of goes over. And he's like, Dad, did you go out? Get off me, son. I can do what I want. Your brother Lorenzo found us in the square where we uh, met your father, and uh, we're returning him home. That's all it is, nothing more. Why are you covered in blood? He, like, looks a bit shocked at your question. He looks down and he's like, uh, it's mine. It's mine. Are you, your injured? blood, your blood should be in on the inside, not the outside. Uh, well, well observed, Master Dwarf. So why is it outside? I I cut myself on, and he gestures at the tools on the table. He's like, I was I was doing some some work with the tools, and I I cut myself. Why would you cut yourself? It wasn't it wasn't on purpose, all right. Can I see if he's lying? Insight. Okay. <laughs> 
bollocks. Um, I mean, makes sense. His man works in a farm. There's lots of tools there. It could be quite easy to cut yourself on them. <laughs> so Tristan <laughs> nods in agreement. As he also thinks the same. These, these things do happen on farms. Yeah. That's just uh, an unusual amount of blood for the amount of tools that are out, that's all. I mean, I, I'm coming well, from a farm background, so I just wanted to uh, I wanted to make sure. Is your farm safer than this? Oh, markedly, yes, it's a dairy farm. The devil comes from a safer farm than this man. I may look like a devil, but I'm not a devil. So mind your language, sir. Allow my mind. So he, uh, Giorgio, actually, like while this is happening, um, he looks visibly uncomfortable, and he's like, sort of, not not fitting, but occasionally like twitching and stuff, and looks looks visibly unwell. Like he's pale, um, he's unshaven, uh, his clothes have got tears and stuff in them. Does not look like a a healthy. Are you person. okay? Yes. Uh, look. I thank you for dropping off, but I really think you should go. Really, think I think you should go now. Are you twitches. sure? You, you don't look well. I'm fine, and he, he goes to like kind of like push Tazros, who's standing in front of him, away. Like pushes you like that, Tazros. Keep your hands together. And he's he like almost bends over, and he's like, "Just leave, please." Something's not right here. What's going on? Can I? You will get it on um, the side, right? Lorenzo's Pardon? father behind me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Lorenzo's father. Uh, let me just drop a token in for him, actually. Sorry, I should have done one. So just he's trying to shield him you. a little bit. Yeah. So he stands he behind was, uh, you. Right on the outside, right? Giorgio. Uh, like I mean, he was he, hurt, right? He has blood on his clothes. Yeah, but is he like physical hurt? Or just blood? From As far as you can see, there's no wounds or anything. Okay. And he like, Ugh! and he drops to one knee. I suggest we all stand back a bit. This isn't going to be pretty. I've got a good idea what this is. I think we met him the other day. We met him the other day. I met many people. Just trust me, Taz. Take a step back and wait. I will take a step forward. Okay, so Tazros, as you step forward, um, like you, he sort of is like grunting, like like straining type of grunting, and you, his skin on the back of his neck it starts to like ripple and like sort of tufts of like fur start to like poof, poof, kind of like pop out of like really patchy fur, and he's like in agony as like you hear bones like as like his arms kind of reshape. And uh, you recognise um, the strange thing happening in front of you to be like the um, uh, the rat creature that transformed the other day in the uh, in the basement, as it like his face deforms and like a, a rat-like jaw appears on this man's face as his his human features seem to almost like melt and fade away as like bust. Uh, bursts of fur and tufts like kind of crap with him and he's like in agony and pain and you should all roll initiative. <laughs> Fucking knew it. No combat account yet. God should damn it, that initiative's awful. Ooh. So knight, I'd ready that shield if I were you. As I knock an arrow. Right, so, um, Tazros, you roll highest. So this man is just, this has just happened right in front of you. It's this, this, this man who was talking to you moments ago was just deformed and changed into this weird, uh, like, humanoid rat combo with, like, with big teeth and, and claws. Well, uh, Tazros was really pissed because uh, he was just delivering an old guy and not dealing with a, another rat problem. He was so over it. So he's going to rage on that part. Nice. Barbarian flowchart. Like, when um, doubt, rage. Make it work this time instead of... Oh, hold on. Uh, 
<laughs> no, I cannot get it to work. But I am raging. There we okay. go. Okay. It's because the game is paused. Oh, sorry. It is paused. Hey, now try. Uh, I cannot... Because uh, my chair is broken again, but we will fix it later. <laughs> um, I will spring with my great axe. Okay. So, you can do so. Roll away. I hope... Hold on, I can try it one more time. This should be this, and this should be... Right, so you, you swing with this great axe. Now, I guess, perhaps seeing this man who you were having a conversation with just moments ago transform in front of your very eyes into this weird beast that you fought that... It turn, turn, last time you saw it, it was like a rat, and then it changed into this weird man, and now it's a man that turned into a weird rat-like thing. What the hell is this? The... The mind blowingness of this all distracts you a little bit as you swing your axe and it thumps into the uh, the ground to the side of him, cutting the end of a blanket off that which is which was uh, nestled on um, a little hay bed, and it is uh, the old man's turn. So he's like, "What's going on? Where's my son?" And he takes a step forward, and then he like slips and kind of falls over and you hear like cracking and popping and stuff as he's like ah! and um he starts to undergo what looks like the same transformation um next to you uh siege no, bollocks i did not see that coming i need to add him into the counter in the right order Hang on. There we go. So, uh, that happens. And now it is Elaine's turn. So, uh, this the squire of the, the knight that uh, you guys met this morning, she is startled by this. And she uh, steps forward next to um, Siege and she shouts to Sir Tristan. She's like, Sir Tristan, what do we do? Strike it. Cut it down. And she draws her sword and her rapier and she swings at this um, this former old man, but even though he was frail and stuff, this new figure with like the hair and the teeth, it looks a lot stronger and, and younger compared to uh, him. Does not look like an old rat type creature, uh, but still she slices with her rapier and uh, swings wide as she does so. And I think, is that updating properly? Can't see any change uh, for rolls and stuff. Oh, of course, because I'm rolling uh, at the DM ones, which you don't see. That is fine. I just cool. saw it wasn't updated properly. That is my fault. Um, Siege, it's your turn. This man, this old man you just held back, uh, you've got his gold still in your pocket. That uh, one gold from his son uh, is right next to you, and he's still like racked in pain. Okay, so I would like to move as far away as I can up towards the back door, uh, so over here, mm -hmm. uh, which I should be able to do with my movement, yeah? Yep, so as you go to step away, he will take um, his reaction and try and swipe, swipe at you. Uh, can I use my newly acquired skill? Oh, sh... Is it so you want to use, use your my... cunning action, which you can use your bonus action to disengage. Yeah, if I can. Yes, you um, can do that as a rule. Okay. That's something you can do. So I'm going to use my cutting action to disengage, move away, and then uh, fire my knocked arrow at the one in front of Taz. Okay, roll it. Okay, uh, so just check if I can actually move that far. So, yeah, I can move to the back can door, can't far. I? Yeah, yeah easily. cool. Okay, and then I'm going to fire a arrow somewhere. Give me a second, short bow. There you go. Nice. So your arrow flies true uh, over the, the the dumpy head of the dwarf uh, in front of you, and it hits into this um, uh, strange-looking thing. I don't see any damage rolled for that. Oh, apologies. I'm not quite sure why that didn't happen. There you go. There we go. And um, stealth attack as well. Uh, sneak sneak attack. attack. Yeah. So you roll your yeah. sneak attack bonus. Nice. So this arrow flies across uh, between your ear and your shoulder at Tazroth. Sorry, goes and it 
hits into the the, the uh, like the collarbone of this figure in front of you with a quite a strong thud like poof, and it bleh, you see its shoulder jump back and some some fresh blood sort of seeps down from it as it does so uh harzana so how big are these reds compared to me um they're about humanoid size so um uh, yeah they're medium creatures Okay, then I grab uh, that uh, metal, the magic metal color that I had from the first session. I'll grab that and attempt to put it on uh, the uh, the rat down by uh, Elaine. Okay, um, so you will step forward and it will try and resist you. So it will be a contested strength. So uh, if you roll a strength, please. Oh dear. So with a five, you like step forward towards this uh, thing, and you've got this this collar that you've you got taken off the other day, and you, you try and fasten it onto its neck, but its neck is like so still in the transformation process. It's not it's like still; it's got fur all around it, and you can't like try and you, you try, but its face is right in front of you as well as you're trying to do so. You're trying to reach around this thing, and it's very distracting, and uh, it's struggling, and you really you just can't get the, the two sides of the clasp to go together. And that's that's your action to do to do that. What would you like to do? Yes. Is it because uh, the colour is not big enough, or just because I'm not strong enough? Um, it it looks like it possibly would fit. It would probably be quite tight, especially compared to um your slender elven neck. You would probably, have, I mean, how, who, how much of this is fur and how much of this is uh is thick rat boy neck? It's hard to tell at this point. So it's really like whatever. It didn't it didn't work this time for sure. Impossible I, I to say if it didn't uh, work. I tell Elaine to hold it. Uh, that's uh, my turn. Okay, Sir Tristan. Uh, a nice simple one for me. I am going to attempt to break the horrible rat in front of me. Go for it. Roll it. So, <laughs> so much like Tazros, you are equally as distracted uh, as you swing and your sword glances off the, the, the hammer or the head of, uh, of Tadros's axe as you both swing wide uh, in the same turn. This rat has got one arrow sticking out of him and no sword wounds or axe wounds right now. Meanwhile, in the square, uh, Snow, you find a nice spot where there's no uh, no other bards. Um, looks like you could make some, some coin here if you were to perform. Alright, so I set up shop. I roll performance. Yes, oh. nat twenty. <laughs> Beautiful. So you you pull out your uh, you playing your flute. Yeah. Right, so, so you pull out your flute and you there's a, actually nearby there's an empty crate which was probably filled with vegetables for the stand that's next to it and you you spot that and you grab it and you flip it over and you stand up on it to make yourself a little bit taller and you start to perform with this flute and. It's an, it's an incredible performance. Somehow you're both playing the flute and also beatboxing at the same time with your tabaxi mouth. And the crowds are like, whoa, what, what is this incredible music? And people who were maybe standing at other bars, the other sides of the square, all sort of like, you see heads turn and a few people start to wander across. Uh, a couple of the other bars giving you like sort of like mean looks like, god damn, cat person showing us up. Uh, and it's, it's fantastic. Um, before long, you've got probably the biggest crowd in the square. And a couple of people start to drop some coppers into your, uh, uh, like your whatever you've left in front to collect coppers. Meanwhile, in the barn, Tazros. Um, Tazros is still pissed off, so uh, he's gonna swing again. Taz, use the pommel if you can. Shout, shout out, trying to get the guys to do non-lethal damage, having realised that this is someone's family. Uh, I don't care, I'm raged, so I'm just swinging with my great axe. So this time with this great axe, you hit and you strike true, and the, the big solid lump of metal in the head of this thing carves into this thing, right next to the arrow, uh, which uh, Siege sunk in just moments before, um, and it looks like that, that did some damage. It like splits the, the, the fur, uh, and you see blood flow uh, quite clearly this time. Um, and it looks like that hurt, to be fair. I mean, that would I, hurt. Yeah! 
it is the turn of the uh, former old man. So he, now in full rat form, uh, tries to uh, attack the elven person that just tried to put a collar on him. Like, what the heck? Uh, so it will try and bite you. And it's 23 to hit. Yeah, that's going to hit. But only for three piercing damage. So his jaw clamps down, but it's like his teeth, although perhaps he isn't uh, as uh, old in this form as in his man form, um, he's still an old man with soft old man teeth. Uh, so it only hurts for three piercing damage. And just checking, but if you wouldn't mind, could you give me a constitution save? Dirty rat teeth. <laughs> so um, you feel um, a weird feeling course through um, from this bite um, as someone of nature. You recognise that something unnatural has just been like almost injected into you from the teeth. And it is Elaine's turn. I'm gonna yell out. Try to knock them out. Don't hurt them if you can help it. Try and knock them out. So Elaine um, will try and restrain this uh, this one from before. So I will roll her strength and the old man one as well. I have to open multiple character sheets here. So this time Elaine, uh, your squire, Sir Tristan, she manages to um, like pin the arms of this uh, thing behind it and starts to restrain it. And it is Giorgio's turn. So you've just sunken uh, this massive axe into him, uh, Tazwell, so he is going to go for you. So first of all, he swings his uh, it claws at you and um, swings wide above your head uh, probably the, the muscles have been severed from the axe you just sunk into his shoulder as he misses you but then he will pull back with his, uh, his jaw and try and clamp onto your arm uh, a 17 hit yes okay so that one his teeth sink in and that is uh, nice. So Sir Tristan uses his reaction with his sword, manages to like knock this thing's uh, jaw away from you uh, to the point that it does no damage as he manages to actually knock it um, away. Uh, it doesn't even manage to bite you, thanks to Sir Tristan and his brave interception. Siege. Nice. So I'm going to drop my short bow and draw my rapier and shield, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna move up to flank Sir Tristan, and I'm going to use my rapier's pommel to bash the rat on the head. Okay, go for it. Okay. Uh, so you can do, do just by the way, you can do non-lethal damage with uh, melee weapons, so you can just say you're attacking non-lethally, so it's still the same amount okay. of damage, it just doesn't kill him. Okay, cool. Uh, so just use the rapier, yeah? yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, just do it as normal. Cool. And again, uh, sneak attack damage, because you know, in people in close proximity, yeah? Yep, um, a 10 does not hit, so you swing, and <laughs> th this 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 rat thing is like kind of elusive, um, much more elusive than you might imagine um, a weird transformed rat thing to be, but yet, yet somehow he's dodged almost every attack thrown at him. Um, maybe this time he uh, like just manages to curve away because you were going for the same goddamn shoulder and he was pissed off and he moved. Um, anything else from you, Siege? Can I use my bonus action to move back? I can't remember if I can actually do that or not. So you could move your bonus action to disengage, yeah? And you've 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. So you've got like now 5 feet of movement, I think. So you could move okay. back 5 feet. Use yeah, I can move, disengage. move back and just step mm -hmm. out of range. Yep. Harzana. Well, now that uh, Elaine got the red traveled, I'll uh, make another attempt at getting the color on it. Mm hmm. Go for it. So you 
much stronger this time. You managed to get around it, but it is uh, it rolled higher and it still manages to like uh, like just twist around and stuff. You can't get the thing to bloody clasp together. Like what the hell? Like this this should work, but it's not working. Anything else from you, Harzana? Ah, uh, no, that's it. Okay, uh, Sir Tristan. Yeah, again, simple stuff. We uh, we slice this one. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Sir Tristan is shaken by uh, this thing. This man, who seemed to be uh, a noble human from which he is sworn to defend. Uh, moments ago is now this weird rat thing and that is just really distracting for him so once again uh, he swings his long sword wide into the uh, the wheelbarrow next to him uh, the wheelbarrow is now missing one of its handles as you slice that clean off um, back in the square however snow uh, a great crowd has formed uh, the biggest crowd by far in the whole square people are like clapping along uh, some of them are a little bit off rhythm um, but you with your 25 performance are able to just play this beautiful flute song uh, everyone is amazed like people are still dropping gold in and like not gold but silver uh, and it looks like you're accumulating a decent little pile in front of you Tazros Tazros is gonna swing his great axe he's Go the best it. at the rest for even existing <laughs> another solid hit from the great axe you're adding your rage damage by the way uh, no, I don't think so, because, uh, I have no clue, because it's saying undefined as well, so, just yeah. leave it at this, just this damage, and uh, we'll figure so, out later. So, Raid should add, is it one or two damage? Uh, the... Barbarian Barbarian look. I think it's the same as I level. I don't think it's level, um... It's two melee damage. Yeah, two uh, Rage. Yeah, so you... Yeah, yeah, two. So it's too high than that, so it's actually eight. Um, right, so you swing your great axe, showing up the uh, well-trained and noble knight next to you with your second strike in a row um, into the side of this thing, and it doubles over, like like blood hanging out or falling out is like it's like it clearly now in a lot of pain and not very happy with you. Um, the man who just had someone attempt to put another collar on him will now attempt to uh, bite at uh, Herzana once again. Uh, so that is 14 to hit. It hits. Okay, so this time he sinks in again uh, for five piercing damage on you. His jaw clamps down on your shoulder. Uh, you don't need to make a constitution save this time because uh, whatever happened last time, it's already happened. Elaine, um, at this point, she like, she's let's go of him, and she draws her uh, her sword and she tries to run this beast through uh, with her rapier, and she hits, good solid hit, doing three piercing damage to uh, to this thing as it struggles uh, with jaw still attached to Harzana. I thought of that. And now um, the man, the rat formerly known as Giorgio, will take another um, bite, but this time at Sir Tristan, who blocked him previously. 15 to hit. Nope, not even close. And he tries to swipe with his claws. 20 to hit. Oh, that does it. Yeah, so this, these claws sweep across your uh, your breastplate. One of them goes through the, the gash that was left from the strange demon you fought the other day, which hasn't been repaired, and it just across your chest, uh, doing five damage to you as it goes. Siege. So I'm going to step in again and uh, try another non-lethal attack. Mm -hmm. uh, so rapier... Way that'll do nicely. Nice. And your sneak attack? Oh! Cool. <laughs> so Siege uh, steps forward next to you, Sir Tristan, and he has this rapier. It's very delicate, and he switches it around, and then whoo, 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 and he is able to um, hit the the rat man and brings him with down uh, with with one sw uh, fell swoop, uh, and he crumbles uh, unconscious, not dead, to the floor in front of you. Um, with my bonus action, can I move towards um, the old man? You don't have to use your bonus action, you can just use your movement for that. Okay, cool. Uh, so I'm going to step 
closer but not such the mm -hmm. in direct engagement range. Yep. Hosanna. Well, I give up on uh, trying to get the color on the red. So I drop uh, the color and then I use my action to disengage. Yep. So move yourself where you want to move to? Very cool. And then I use my bonus action to channel, uh, channel the power of the stars and form the hunter constellation. Nice. What does that do again, remind me? Ooh, nice. Nice. Yeah, so I that hits. Like... That, yeah, this this spectral arrow um, from the stars that you conjure around you slams into this uh, this rat-like figure um, for a solid amount of radiant damage. And... So the others can see. Like, I'm starting to glow, and uh, they can see this. Uh, Constellation pattern on uh, me. Very cool. So Tristan, you see uh, your comrade from the other day um, glowing as like like points of light kind of surround her, uh, almost like a constellation in the stars. And then this weird spectral arrow comes flying out of her and slams into this uh, this rat figure. What do you do? I uh, I make a note. There's uh, much more to her than. Uh... Then she's currently let, letting on. I thought she was just some sort of dangerous hostage murdering monster, but uh, maybe, maybe not. And then I charge the uh, charge the remaining uh, rat, and I whack as he him. as he Good charges I past. Use the goddamn pommel, man. Nice. So. You swing your longsword, and it's a hit! Sir Tristan, the man of many misses, manages to swing his sword and just cleaves into the, the side of the hip of this, uh, this strange-looking rat fellow. And you hear Sir Tristan uh, exclaim in, um, uh, what's the word, uh, not pleasure, but um, glee, as he's finally able to make contact uh, with all of his training uh, over the years. And he's finally, finally mastered it, exactly. Uh, meanwhile, in the square, snow. Um, you've come to the end of your first set. Um, there's a rousing uh, round of applause from everybody watching, and they're all sort of looking at you in expectation. All right, so I I introduce myself at the end of the first set. Hey guys, my name's Snow. I'm from Amamake. Keep coming and seeing me and paying me lots of money. Let me know if you need help with anything. I'm really good at PvP. And then I uh, <laughs> I kind of broke the fourth wall there. But then I uh, I roll again for performance to start my next set. Nice, go for it. Okay, so this this set is uh, it's not as good. Like some of the songs you're repeating um, from the previous one, so people are like, "Oh yeah, I've kind of heard this one. Cool. I guess she's not got that many songs." Then, so people start to sort of like drift away. Uh, some people are still around, especially like people who've wondered by. Everyone's like, "This is a very good bard, but you know, it was better like 20 minutes ago. You kind of missed the the highlight clearly." Tazros. Yeah. Um, Tazros wants to scoot over to the uh, other rat. Mm-hmm. He will walk here, and uh, he will swing his great axe. Nice, because he's like blind by rage, so he only sees rats. God damn it, Taz! Yeah, so um, even though you're blinded by rage, you're blinded somehow as well, and you swing your axe and you miss. Uh, perhaps maybe as you go by, see he's just trying to nudge your arm. He's like, "Oh, don't hit him!" and you you swing wide, uh, missing him. He yeah. is going to uh, turn to uh, uh, Kyle, uh, sorry, Sir Tristan, and he is going to swing his uh, his claws at you. And uh, he not only connects with you, but this time it like just goes into the side of your neck, and you feel uh, like a horrific pain as the claws break across your jaw and like pull out, and like just you see your own blood go out in front of you uh, as he does. 12 piercing damage, slashing damage to you. He then tries to bite you as well. Which also uh, he successfully, because you've been knocked from this, and he goes for the goes for the juggler which has been exposed, and he clamps down on you and deals another 6 piercing damage. And All you right. must make a con I am, save. I am at minus 3 here, people. 
So um, as you're dropping down, you you feel like this this heat uh, on the surface of your skin um, as some venom or something uh, doesn't get injected into you, but sort of it's come out as the jaw was removing from you. But uh, everyone else sees Sir Tristan drop to the floor uh, after just being mauled by this beast. Elaine is like Sir Tristan, except in the woman's voice, and she steps forward and tries to strike with her rapier once again. Uh, but is just incompetent, maybe, uh, and misses right above uh, the head of this rat creature. Siege! Okay, so I'm going to move past uh, Elaine and step into this space here, and I'm going to uh, attack the rat. Uh, again, trying for non-lethal damage to knock it out. Um, so, rolling attack. There we go. Nice. And sneak. So you hit with the, the side of your sword, bunk across uh, the, the the face of this this creature, and you bonk its head, uh, and it shakes its head like looks dazed, but and it's not in good condition, but it's like steps back like like uh, from that from that hit. It was a solid okay. hit. Okay, and I'm gonna step back again out of engagement range. Mhm. Mm you, you're using your bonus action to disengage. Now. Yeah, yeah. Harzana. Uh, I take a step forward. And put my hands on uh, Sir Tristan and uh, channel the power of nature to cure his wounds. Very nice. So Tristan, you feel approximately six better than you did a moment ago. <laughs> and then once I'm done with the moment of healing, I channel the power of the stars to fire another arrow at the uh, red. Mm -hmm. Is that an action to do that? It's a bonus action. Cool. Nice. So this spectral arrow flies forward uh, and plunges in through the, the like the jaws. This thing was like reaching back like that to try and bite again and the spectral arrow just goes poof, in through like the gap between your jawbone and like the soft bit and just goes poof, and you, you see like a splat of blood on the, on the wall behind them of the barn as the thing just continues and just Poof, crumples to the floor and as it does like you see um and this happens to Giorgio as well you see like tremble as like the the transformation seems to almost undo as the, the, it ends up you're looking at the uh the body of an old man um who looks although he looked old before he now looks even older um and yeah he is very definitely dead and you can come out of initiative So you have an unconscious person, and you have a dead old man. What are you doing? And so Tristan, you're on the ground. You've just been like, you just come to, and you see like um, Elaine standing over you. She's like, Sir Tristan, are you okay? And she's like trying to look at the wound on your neck, and it looks pretty fucking bad. I'm going to use the 50 foot of hemp and rope I have in my backpack and restrain Giorgio um, so we can actually talk to him when he comes around. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to try and drag Hazana away to talk to her quietly in a corner. So uh, he's asleep uh, or unconscious for two hours, Giorgio. Okay. Hazana, do you mind if I had a word quickly? Sure. I don't know the intentions of you and your comrades, but uh, take it from me. I'd get that wound looked at as fast as possible. I think something untoward may happen if you're not careful. Yeah, definitely. And uh, move back towards the main party and uh, look down sadly at the uh, body of the old man. Try to figure out what to do next. So what are the rest are you doing? Tazros, what are you doing? I want to smash my great axe into like the old man just because I'm still raging. <laughs> yep, so uh, you can. He's not going to evade this one. So uh, the rest of you see uh, the dwarf step forward and just sink his great axe into the torso of this uh, man with a, a sickening thud and the crunch of 
bones breaking under the, the weight of this great axe slamming into the, uh, the corpse of uh, the old man. Taz, yeah, take, take control that. of yourself. What? He's already dead. Why? Yeah, now he's double dead. <laughs> you can't make him any more dead, you daft dwarf. I mean, have you tried? He's not breathing, his guts are all over the floor, he's clearly not alive. Just step That's back, That's why it's called double dead. <sighs> not talking to stubborn dwarfs. Can you please not? There's already a big, too big mess. Um, the important thing is why he you was on the blood. Sorry, Sir Knight, what did you say? I missed that. Not to ignore the giant rat in the room, but what are you guys going to do about this rat you've tied up? Uh, I'd like to talk to him, since he's the only one left alive out of the family. Do you speak rat? No, but he's clearly a man who speaks common, doesn't he? Clearly. Why don't you step outside and look at that wound with your uh, girlfriend? Say, so looking I at uh, the squire. The squire, not you. <laughs> so Elaine will step out with Sir Tristan as he steps outside. The old man. Gonna... Uh, so the, the the guy is tied up. Um, he's unconscious. Um, from from the hit and knocked him out. Um, what do you want to do? Uh, since the other two are out, out of the room and Taz is still being Taz, I'm going to attempt to take the ring that I rescued off of the old man and then I'm going to investigate his corpse. Okay, so are you trying to do this um, subtly so the others don't see it? Uh, yeah, so I'll step up like... Slide the fan then, please. Yep, yep, yep. Bollocks! <laughs> so Tazros... Um... You've just sunk your axe into this old man and you see uh, a little uh, sort of pale grey hand come in and slip the ring off of his fingers and into his pocket. Investigation now, please, Siege. That's better. Right, so you, like, go through his, his other pockets and stuff. He doesn't really have much. He looks like a pretty old man. He does just, you know, he doesn't have very much at all. Um, but you do notice that uh, on his arm, which was covered by his robes, um, there is, uh, looks like a sort of a healed... Bite wound, uh, which looks pretty similar, if if not healed at this point, um, to that of um, Harzana's and also to uh, uh, Sir Tristan's. Shite. It's fucking infectious. I, I saw it happen, like he took the ring off, right? Yeah, you saw it. Yeah, I want to go to the rat itself, like, and just put, uh, grab a hand axe and then chop, like, the paw off and, like, Go to see it's like it's back to, it's back to an old man form. It's back to an old man form. Oh well, the then chop off the hands and just say like, <laughs> if you want to have the hands, here yeah, have it. <laughs> That's not what I was after, Taz, but I appreciate the offer. <laughs> and I'm, I'm standing there waiting like to for Siege to grab the hand, just like very awkwardly, like <laughs> here, here. So I'm me. gonna look at the hand in disgust, look at Taz, and then walk past him to uh, uh, Giorgio tied up and uh, try and rouse him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can sort of slap him and shake him, and after uh, you know not very long, uh, he sort of uh, 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 and he struggles, and he's, he when he realizes he's tied up. George, yo, listen to me. You're only alive because I stopped the others from killing you. Where's my father? Where's my father? Your father, unfortunately, didn't make it. I'm sorry about that. And he, you, you see, like the kind of the fight go out of him almost as he was still struggling at this point and he kind of just goes <sighs> no I'm very sorry there was nothing I could do in this regard uh, he's like he like yells and the rest of you uh, hear like a yell coming from uh, inside the barn and it's like a yell of despair what are you step, I know step back in when he starts yelling I know you turned into a rat I've seen you do it <laughs> I saw you turn the other day what uh, is going on here and he's like you see him like he's like crying a little bit you know his dad's just being killed and then he, he sees he look he strolls up a bit and he sees uh, a dwarf holding the hand of his father uh, in the center of the room he's like oh, why 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 did you kill him he's just an old man. put that down why are you guys cutting up corpses 
Or when uh, Tristan is trying to get inside, I'll like grab him and tell him, you stay here, we need to look at your wound. So, um, he's still, like, he. this man is, like, pretty distraught. Um, he's tied up, he's watching um, the body of his elderly father be hacked apart, um, and he is not 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 very uh, uh energetic shall we say Giorgio, if i don't get a response from you i'll have to go and ask your brother at the market i don't want to do that he doesn't know he doesn't know then what's going on talk to me it was uh there's this is beasts from from ravaros they're pushing everything out all the stuff from the tanglewood they're just pushing everything out and i don't know i guess we <laughs> I was out in, in not near the edge of the Tanglewood. We were up near uh, near Fab and just doing some doing some deliveries, and we, we were camped and we, we were set upon by these beasts, these rat beasts. And I made it out, but no one else did. And then uh, and he, he shows you like uh, a healed wound in his uh, his hand or his, his arm. Sorry, he's like it. It's like a curse or something. I can't, I have no control over it. I so, I try to I try to keep it away from my father and my brother, but then with the other rat, there's other rats as well. They were all in the basement, so I stayed out here. But then Lorenzo made made our dad stay out here as well to protect him from the rats, and I couldn't help myself. I couldn't help it. I'm not in control. So oh, were you in the basement yesterday? I think so. I don't really remember. Right, because we chased someone like you out of the basement. We uh, killed a lot of rats between myself and my companions and uh, chased a similar form to yours out of the basement, out of the house. So. When, when I. Sometimes when I come back around, I've, there's, there's giant rats. I, I guess they're. They, they feel like I'm, or we're, I don't know, like, their leader or something. I don't know. I don't really understand it, but okay. I, I don't know. I don't know if I bit anyone else. Oh, my God, did I bit, did I bite someone else? My dad, oh, God, dad. Yeah, you did bite other people, and if you mention it, you said it's a curse. What, what would you call this? It's not a blessing. That's a fair comment. Uh... Ugh. Bear with me a second. Um, you Just kill that. me now! I don't want. I, I've already. I've caused so much pain. My dad. My dad. I don't. You can't tell Lorenzo. Please, just, just kill me as well. What if we can break the curse? What if we can lift the curse? What would you do then? I don't. I don't know if it can be. Well, I'd like to try. I don't want to leave you in this state, and I also don't want to kill you. So that gives me one option. He's Let me speak to my companions. Well, it's not Sorry. like I'm going anywhere, and he struggles slightly, like against the. the yeah, I know. I, I, I tie a good knot. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'll uh, step out, step outside, and I'll drag, drag Taz with me to uh, speak to the other two. Taz, drop the fucking right hand. I would drop on the fire and just walk with him. Right, so long and short of it is that guy's been cursed some something out of the uh, Raravas Roads. I think you two may now carry that curse so we need to try and break it. We need to try and get you looked at. Yeah, I would look at uh, Sir Tristan if he didn't run inside. So give me a give me a medicine check from Hosanna uh, to examine these wounds. Uh, before I do that, I'll uh, uh, once again uh, channel the power of the stars, and this time it's symbol of uh, wisdom. So again, you see Hosanna like radiating, like a constellation of stars kind of surrounds her form. Meanwhile, Snow's having a great time performing. Like she's got maybe like five, six gold worth of tips from this. It's been a great morning for her. With an eighteen, is, do you get any benefit from your um, uh, uh, constellation? If if I roll uh, below ten, then it counts as a ten. 
Right, right. So with an 18, um, you examine uh, the wound on Sir Tristan, and it looks like you see like bits of kind of like venom or something that are on the outside of the skin. It looks like it's just a it's a nasty bite, um, but it looks like it's not infected or anything like that. Um, when you look at your your own one, you kind of like touch it. It feels hot to the touch, and um, you you can like swipe your finger and it just like pus and stuff. Doesn't look good. Yeah, it definitely needs to see someone um, as quick as possible. Can you not heal your own wounds? I'm not sure if my magic will uh, cure the uh, cure the infection. Okay, well, maybe my colleague Snow can have a look at it. She uh, proved very helpful on the road. Yeah, we'll see what the town the town has anyone that can help. Otherwise, my magic might be the best option. Uh, so, Knight, you uh, mentioned you are uh, looking to lift curses. Do you carry one already? Aye. How would one go about lifting a curse? Because that's something, despite my appearance, I've no knowledge of. Uh, a witch, a cleric, um, a minor deity. <laughs> there are as many uh, ways well, to solve uh, curses. There are curses, unfortunately. Uh, I can say quite safely I'm none of those, but uh, maybe we can find one between us and uh, see if we can find the problem to this unfortunate man's curse and yours at the same time. Would you yeah, uh, be willing to... Uh, Search too, with us, perhaps? He's too dangerous to leave here, so he, com he comes with us. Well, of course I'll try and think, find a solution for this. I can't die like a savage like that. So you... You can, you can see that Hasana is clearly upset. Like, she's not hiding it. Are you taking she's a tied up Giorgio back into town? Well, that's going to raise a few eyebrows if we drag him along. How do you suggest we do this, Sir Knight? Well, the alternative is we leave him here and he hurts people, so that's not... He's tied option. up. He's going nowhere. You can trust my knots. So, so your your option instead is we leave the man tied up in the barn just until he dies. I that's, suggest that's that we go and find someone in the town to see if we can find a solution. If we can't, we come back and look at other options. I'm not saying we leave him tied up there indefinitely. That would not be humane. So what if we find a wheelbarrow and just it. chuck him in there, and then bring the wheelbarrow? It's less uh, the only safe way. I don't know about you, but I really don't want this to spread in my blood. So I'm going back to the town. Despite Taz's, uh... let's just leave it there. Uh, it's probably a bet. The wheelbarrow. See if you can find one. It's, uh, if we can find something to cover it and keep him quiet. There's one in the uh, barn. Uh, it's missing one of the handles because Tazros uh, lopped it off when he missed the, the thing at one point. But it's still quite serviceable as a wheelbarrow. Right. Taz, go and get that wheelbarrow you swung your bloody axe at and uh, see if you can find something to cover it, cover Georgia with. I'll go and uh, retrieve my bow uh, whilst I'm doing that because I dropped it earlier. I uh, want to grab the wheelbarrow and then uh, slowly wheel, well, roll it to uh, the old rat or the, like, the, um, the alive human mm -hmm. who was yep. once a rat and then um, like try to chuck it over him like so he gets covered mm -hmm. and then turn around and find some hay and just stuff the area that's like not felt so like So you're covering hay. him up with an upside down wheelbarrow and covering that in hay? Yeah. Okay. So, you, yep, you can do that, no problem. Uh, Siege, after a few, after like 30 seconds or so, uh, the dwarf walks out of the barn, sans man, sans wheelbarrow. Ah, uh, right. Okay. I'm going to go back in. I'm going to pick up my bow. I'm going to cover the old man, because I don't want him just lying there like that, and uh, speak to Giorgio, make him understand what's going on and if he won't be quiet gag him he's just he's just sobbing quietly at this point 
Right, so I'm going to wander back into the barn. Just... Is is there anything in there that I see glancing around that could be useful? Because, you know, light fingers. Um, I mean, there's some shoddy old farm tools. There's a couple of barrels, probably of like ale, some sacks of flour, and a bunch of crates of edge. That's about it, really. Okay. Uh, I'll wander back out and join the main party then. And okay. I'll crouch down by the uh, wheelbarrow and I'll speak to Giorgio. Right. We're going to try and find a cure for this curse of yours. But you have to remain quiet. Or this pretty knight here with this big shiny sword is going to lop your fucking head off. Intimidation with advantage because he's just seen uh, the party uh, mutilate the corpse of his father. Yeah, good one, Twigon. That'll do. He is intimidated by you. Uh, this man with horns just leaned, leaned over him and threatened to behead him. Um, he takes a sidelong glance at the, the, the body of his, his dad, sobs quietly, like, <laughs> and just sort of seems defeated. So you're heading back into time with a wheelbarrow with a tied up man in it, but covered, correct? Yeah. Okay. So let's flip back to the map of the city. So you come down the, the, the street, you pass the Silent King Tavern. Um, as you enter the main square, you uh, see Snow finishing up a performance. And Snow, you see uh, your compatriots who left uh, not that long ago wander back into the square. They look worse for wear, especially uh, Sir Tristan the Knight and uh, Arzana. They both look pretty uh, worse for wear at the minute. Uh, and they've got a wheelbarrow. Sana's probably the first one to arrive since he started uh, leaving when they were filling okay. with the wheelbarrow. Okay, so you arrived just ahead, uh, and you see them with a wheelbarrow with a bunch of hay in it, and they're wheeling that into the square. Alright, so I finish up my performance, and I run over. Oh, hey guys! How was the how was the trip? You guys seem to take a little while. What happened? You guys look kind of rats. beat up. Fucking rats! Can I take Snow to one side and try and quietly explain to her what's happened without her going... <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, Siege? What happened to the old man? Right, listen, Lassie. This is a, a bit of an unusual situation, so do me a favor and keep some of the wraps. But uh, you know that rat that escaped the barn, the big one we fought the other day? Yeah. That is a were rat, and it's underneath the straw. We're trying, he's cursed, okay? This is really weird. We're trying to find a solution. The two new guys, they've both been fucking bitten by it as well. Oh no, but like, curses are easy to get rid of, right? Don't you just talk to like a priest or something? With like holy water? Well, you know more than I do. Do you, is the one you know of? We could, do you know where to find one? Um, so Snow tries to do a flashback memory to see if she remembers any priests or religious looking figures in the crowd that she performed to. Yeah, so um, you saw a couple of robed figures kind of come by every so often. They looked like priests, and uh, from your... Uh, vantage from where you were, you can see over the tops of some buildings, um, uh, like a, a cross, uh, from, like the top of a steeple, and it looked like it was maybe sort of here where I'm pinging. All right, so snow points in that general direction. Yeah, they're over here. I think I saw some guys go this way. We should go check it out. Right. Okay. Uh, Hazana, so night. Well, will you join us? Hi. Yeah. Okay, so the sooner I get rid of this, the better. Yeah, understandably. Let's uh, go over there as fast as we can then. So again, so... you wheel this barrel with a person in it, uh, covered in some um, some hay, and you head up on the side streets. And sure enough, you come to uh, what appears to be a church. So Snow walks up the steps first. Uh greets anyone on the outside or knocks on the door going, Hey, this is Snow, the bard from earlier! Is there someone here who can help us? Uh, you, you see like um, a couple of robed figures look around and one of them sort of gets up from his knees and he comes forward and he's like, Blessings to you. Um, I saw your performance in the square. It was most delightful. Uh, what brings you to the uh, Holy Amarian Church of Lashkai? Yeah, so, um, so... Oh, oh um, go ahead, Siege. Siege knows more. I'm going to just step up beside you um, and just not say anything for the moment, just to uh, reinforce the point that despite you know you being a tabaxi, you need to be taken seriously. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He gives you a bit yeah, of a so... side, side glance with a bit of concern in his face as a uh, demon spawn steps into um, his church. 
most unusual. Alright, so Snow carries on. So, this is my friend Siege, and we have some friends, and we think they're cursed, and we really don't know anything about curses, but could you help us? He looks visibly shocked, he's like, cursed? Yeah, like, not like a demon curse, but like, you know, kind of like a lesser demon curse. He, he looks at Siege and sort of like, I don't, I can't see anything me visible. Before you ask. No, no, not him! He's a, he's a typhling, don't be racist. I mean, my friends, there's a different curse. Uh, I mean, please, please come in, like, if we can help, we we shall, but I don't, you mean, you need to, you need to tell me more, um, I can only do so much, do whatever, side, whatever the, the blessings of the Lord will. Do you have a side entrance somewhere we could talk in private? We mean you no harm, but we have some concerns about a member of our party. We're, we're but a small church, we have no private areas, uh, uh, Sir, Sir Demon. Um, please, though, please, please come in. He gestures, and it's like a small church, it's got like a couple lines of pews, there's like another priest at the front who's like, like sort of dealing with the candles and things. It's, it's quite dark inside, there's like big stained glass windows and some light is coming through because they're quite thick glass, like the colour inside is like the, the, the rays of different colours. So it's not very bright, but it's, it's more than bright enough. It's, it's a church, it's a small church. Is there anyone else in there aside from the two priests? Uh, no. Okay. Oh, Taz, Snow... go on. Yeah, I'll say Snow gestures the rest of the party to come in. Yeah, I step inside. As, as you step by, Hadana, you see the wind in your neck and you say, oh, that looks very nasty. Ooh. Taz, get Giorgio, drag him inside. I will, uh, we'll... Like roll the wheelbarrow inside and just kick at the end, so um, like Jojo jo just like flumps out on the um, floor. Father Lamoth sort of steps back. It's like, whoa, whoa what is this? Uh, I, I'm not party to anything. Like, this man's tied up. What are you doing here? Uh, and he, right. he gestures to Let the other explain. priest. He's going to say something. He's like, this. I I can't be party to anything like this. We might have to get the guards. We have. Why is this man tied up? You've been bitten. Yes, by some transforming. This guy transformed into a rat and then he bit us. He transformed so into a rat? I believe it's an infectious kind of curse. One second, and he, he bustles with his robes like swishing across uh, to uh, to the side of the like little altar. Um, and he like pulls out a couple of books and some scrolls and he comes forward and he opens this one in, like, in one hand and he's like. And then he's like, he shows you a page with um, a, a drawing, a couple of drawings. One of like a rat, uh, kind of crude. Another one of like a person. And another one that looks like a mix of uh, rat. He's like, like this, like this. Yes, like that. He slams the book shut. He's like, fascinating. And I, where where is this rat now? I'll just point I, at Giorgio. Oh. And the other and, is dead. He get he gets out a little uh, like it's kind of like a wooden cross, but except it's like an Amarian logo, um, and he sort of like has a little prayer, and then he he bends down and he closes his eyes, and um, you can see like little sort of sparks gently falling from his fingers over it, and he he stands up and he's like, "You were right. This is there is a curse. There's a curse upon this man. It it's too strong for me though. It's feels like and he looks at the book. He's like." Lycanthropy. But this is fully developed. And you said you were bitten. Yeah. It's like, okay. Um, who who was bitten? Just you. I, I, I was on the Sir Tristan about yeah. And he goes over to Sir Tristan and he starts like doing the, the um the same thing. You you feel a little warmth on on you as he's doing something. It's like It seems that you you, you have not got any curse. You you well there is something deeper but it is very powerful, way beyond what I can do. But it doesn't feel like lycanthropy. That tracks. And then he goes to Hazana and he does the same. And he's like, oh, yes. I feel it. I feel it in, in your blood. This this piece of... Have you transformed? Has, ha, have you transformed yet? No. Okay, okay. Um... And he bustles away to the side and he's like gets up some some various bits and pieces and he's like um i don't have much of this materials left uh 
I'm happy to to do it. And I think I can remove this curse from you, um, Madam Elf. But please, um, I, I need I need these supplies. Uh, if you wouldn't mind after this, would you be able to ref refill the supplies of the church? We need this to heal people. I can do that. Anything that has removed this from me. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I I estimate it's probably about 20 gold worth of uh, of supplies in here. And he starts making this like salve and he's like sort of like grinding up and he's like, oh, lacking through pace. It's been a long time. And then he, um, he starts to rub it in and then he does some finger wiggling magic and... Um, those of you with uh, with magical inclinations know that he's casting a remove curse at third level, and um, he is able to re cure the lycanthropy that had uh, coursed through your veins, Hosanna, fairly easily, uh, and you feel it like the warmth disappear from the neck. I like to breathe out in relief. But this man, I can't do anything about this, and he points to Georgio on the floor. All right. Chuck him in, and uh, we'll deal with somewhere, and the Tuckles just, like, try to push him back into wheelbarrow and just throw Hayes in. Ho, 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 sir, ho, sir, dwarf. Ho, sir, dwarf. Perhaps, if he's as cursed as you say, then we should fetch the guards, and they, they will have to... They'll have to lock him up. He's no danger as he is, but... Yes, but... Turns, I, well, I yes, exactly, that. exactly, yeah. sir, sir, demon. But the name I, is siege. It's not demon. Can, can we have? Much. Can you? Can we can't let him? We can't leave him to turn. Surely. No, I wasn't going to advocate that. I was going to suggest if the guard can be relied upon not to execute him, then we hand him over. But I don't wish for him to be harmed. I don't know where you're from, sir, demon. But we're not in the in the habit of executing villagers just because they are sick. And uh, no, maybe that's maybe. how your people like to like to live their lives. But as humans, we're 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 kinder people than you. Well, maybe you should tell that to Sir Knight. I'm the one who actually stopped them from being killed. Thank you very much. Their town, their laws, their monsters are a threat. It's hardly a threat to the five of us. Speak for yourself. You're not the one going hidden. Yeah, but now you're fine, aren't you? So. So, uh, uh, whatever doesn't kill us gets let off. So Snow interrupts and goes, So, Mr. Like Priest Guy, where the where the heck do we find someone who can cure this man then? Uh, I mean, maybe one of the major towns. Like, maybe you could go uh, probably somewhere like Amar to the to the great cathedral there. The 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 grand uh, the grand bishop might be able to do something, but I mean, it's it's, it's beyond my capabilities. I'm just a a, a local healer essentially. Would you be able to call the guard for us and uh, once they arrive, hand them over to his care and I'll uh, take my rope back if you don't mind. I, I have already summoned the guard, don't worry. They're on their way. I appreciate it. And then, like, not long after that, um, like, you hear, like, the sound of uh, uh, metal bits on stone uh, as, like, the door of the church opens and uh, a couple of uh, guardsmen uh, walk in and they were like, You You summoned? And they look a bit confused. Right, so... I'm sorry, I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to uh, to the priest here. And the priest's like, yes, um, these... Uh, I don't really know who they are, but they, they brought this man. Uh, I think... He looks like, closer, he's like this, is, this is Giorgio Vellini. This is, uh, this is Vincent's son. Um, anyway, beside the point... Uh, Appears he's been stricken down with uh, some form of uh, rat-based lycanthropy, I think, uh, based on what they said. And um, if that's true, and I have, I've, I have to say it appears to be, um, then we really must lock him up just for for his safety and for the safety of the town. And the guards are like, uh, "What so, looks him through?" It's it means that he turns into be like a rat creature. And attacks people. Like, oh, has he attacked people? And no. mm -hmm. show the scar. No, Snow jumps in and goes, "We uh, there's a small altercation when we were like just trying to help him, but he has not attacked anyone innocent." And she glares at her party because they would just be admitting to him attacking villagers, and then he would die. Snow's right. We stopped he him from hurting anybody. Can't lie to 
So, deception please from Snow. Deception please from Snow. Since I'm helping, can I give her advantage? You can. Awesome. So, um, yeah, the guards, uh, they're like, okay, so he hasn't attacked anybody, um, but he he's trying to... He bit you. Hmm. And do you want to press charges? I'll pass. Okay. They seem a bit confused and they kind of, they all look at each other and one of them uh, has got like a little captain's insignia and he's like, well, um, take, take this man, uh, to, to the bailiffs and, uh, put him in the cell. Uh, and he looks at all of you and he's like, look, you're our, all outsiders here. Don't, this is, hmm, I can't, there's no reason for me to be suspicious of you yet, but please don't make me. And he turns on his heel and he marches out. Thank you very much. And he just oh. receives a glass of wine. Gin and tonic. So Snow turns back to the party and goes, So guys, I think uh, we should maybe send a letter to the uh, healers in the, the, t the city of Amar to let them know that we this town needs their assistance. The the, the priest who you're standing next to still uh, hears this and he's like, we we will we will make contact next time that we we send a message. We will inform them uh, of this. I'm sure they will send uh, an inquisitor down. Okay, that's very good. Thank you. So what are you doing? The man, the the, the yeah, Georgia has been like coming. carried off by these guards, and they've 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 gone. And the priest seems a little bit eager for you to leave now. He's a bit confused and he's a bit like. Mm. Gonna make a quick note to Elaine that. Uh part of our code requires obeying of those placed in legitimate lawful authority not lying to guards because we feel like it she will um uh turn to you be like of course sir tristan of course that's uh it would be dishonorable to to lie to the guards especially for our own benefit very wise sir tristan Overhearing this, I'm going to roll my eyes and uh, walk out and try and find Lorenzo at the market. Okay. So, are you all heading that way? Yeah. Yeah, follow. Okay. So, you head out um, and you head back towards the main square. Um, as, so uh, as we're walking, I poke uh, the Tristan. We shouldn't have gotten involved in this. No, I think we uh, we need to be planning a visit to the cathedral. So you are walking, and as you're going, those of you with passive perceptions of 13 or higher, you can tell that there's like a different level of excitement and buzz now uh, compared to before, and you can hear uh, like whispers uh, as people like like an excited buzz, and you hear um, occasionally you overhear the word demon, demon. So I think that'd be Snow and Hazana, you hear that. Yeah. So Snow hears this and pokes uh, Siege to let him know that people seem to be whispering about him. Ah, Christ. You're right. I forgot about my hood. Thank you. So um, give me a, a perception Siege when this is pointed out to you. Um, for the 15, um, you, uh, see these people that, uh, that Snow has pointed out that are whispering, demon, demon, but none of them actually seem to be paying any attention to you, and they're all hurrying across the square towards the bridge that leads towards the Broken Drum and the Festival Ground. Uh, I poke, uh, I poke Tristan, something is up. I'll, uh, draw a sword, I'll try and look around see if we can uh, so based on the fact that they're running from something i'm gonna see if i can see what they're running from or at least the direction they're running from um so with a nine uh it's a bit there's people everywhere and uh you can't really tell what's going on um but just for clarity um siege when you saw it they were whispering demon they didn't look scared and they weren't look like they were running toward away from something it looked like they were heading towards something and it was like an excited kind of buzz like did, sorry, did you say towards the broken drum? Yeah, t towards the um, the bridge that leads towards the broken drum and towards the festival ground. So you're in the middle of the square and the people are sort of heading 
across the bridge uh, or like people are heading that way and you see more people hear it and they're kind of like what what and if you see people talking and start walking that way as well okay so I'll just gesture the party folks i think it's down this way let's see what's happening all right let's check it out i guess yeah so you're all heading that way yeah yep so you head across the bridge and there's other people who are kind of like people are walking kind of briskly and a couple of people stop and talk and, and they all kind of you, 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 now that you've all been kind of made aware of this you occasionally hear people with like with a question like Do you mean what and like people are all heading that way and as you reach the um the festival ground itself um let me just you should be in a new scene you probably can't see anything yet Adding all to the scene. Oops. You reach the festival ground and it's busy. It's, it's bustling and, and hustling and all sorts. There's um, criers and there's um, like market stands and there's people like sort of uh, doing a demonstration fight in this little um, uh, arena type thing that's been set apart. Uh, there's a number of people trying to attract um, people over to different sort of games and things like that. There's, there's one part, there's a long walkway has been cleared. It's about sort of only one foot wide and ten feet long uh, with a sort of a light brown uh, section of like rug or something has been laid out. And you watch as uh, a couple of guards lift a, a small child up so she can throw what looks like a bean bag uh, towards the end. Um, and they're all cheering her on, and on the little crowd cheering her on at her near hit, uh, near hit of the target at the other end. There's um, someone else crying out like, "Come try Avatar's grasp, win gold!" And there's people sort of stepping up to like pay, and like you know, some people shooting bows and arrows at a target. Um, and it looks like if you hit the the target, there's different levels of prize you can win. You see little like intricate dolls uh, about one foot tall, uh, and uh, you recognise the little doll of Empress Katiz Tash Marcon. Um, it looks like that's one of the prizes that you can win from the archery uh, stand. But people are sort of being distracted uh, because in the background uh, towards this tent that I'm, I'm pinging at, um, there is a elven man uh, in robes um, and he is... Uh, his hands up in the air in a grand gesture and he's like come see the white demon the fearsome Triglavian hunter from deep inside the Ravaros Darkwood only one gold per person step up step up see the demon see the demon now and like there's like big crowd around uh, this uh, this tent is like he's collecting money and people are going in and then occasionally you hear like oh screams and stuff and people come out some people look like scared other people are like wow that's exciting what do you do? Uh, well, good thing they didn't chat us for seeing them when they attacked us. I was going to say, how much money did Snow make from the square? Uh, Snow made seven gold pieces once it's all counted. It's uh, all in like coppers and silvers, but it amounted to seven gold. All right, I give one to each of my party members, so that's f minus four, and then one for myself. And I say, guys, you want to go see the gold demon or the the white demon? Uh, just. As an aside, are you also going to share out the nine gold you got earlier <laughs> from um, what's his face? Oh. I thought we split that three, three, three. I counted that already. Did you? Okay, my apologies. I didn't realize you did that. Yeah. So it would be ta Tavros and uh, Siege and myself. But yeah, I'll split out the seven so we each get one and then I'll keep the other two. Okay. Ah, so uh, it's a big crowd. It's like quite a few people. Like, this is busy now. So it's like, you know, when you're walking through like a relatively busy place and you kind of have to like like turn a little bit you can't just walk clearly through you have to kind of like mingle your way through the crowd um are, are you all heading up towards the tent uh where uh the man's crying out to see the white demon I, i'm yep, not so. what are you doing siege i'm going to find lorenzo okay so uh give me a um investigation with disadvantage because it's so busy <laughs> <laughs> so uh you you do a quick lap of uh the the festival ground uh but you don't see him is there anyone I can ask that would know where he's gone or where he was could be found normally? Who knows? <laughs> God damn it. I'm going to keep searching for him. Okay. The eight is the sum of your efforts, so you're doing that. Meanwhile, 
What are the rest of you guys doing? Uh, following snow. Okay. So as you get closer to this, the crowd is thick uh, as people are like sort of all trying to like crane their heads and try and look through the gaps in the tent. But it looks like there's like two layers of curtain to kind of separate it so that you can't see it. And the the man, the, this this like elven man, is right there at the front, and he's still going on. He's like, "Come see the white demon, the demon, the fearsome Treglavian hunter from deep inside the Ravaros Darkwood. One gold per person. Step right up. Step right up." Next people, please. And a couple of people step up and they're like, oh, hand over their money. And uh, he gestures them inside. And after, you know, 30, 40 seconds, they come out and they look kind of like shocked and pale. And then he, like, again, he's still crying and still calling uh, out. And, yeah, big crowd of people. All right. Hey, guys, you, you want to go in next? I gave you all gold. We can go in for free, pretty much. I'll stay outside. I'm definitely going in. Oh, I'll join in. Yeah, it's three of us. Yeah. So you guys step forward, and um, he's in the middle of it, like the the Tuglavian hunter from deep inside the darkwood. He turns to you three. He's like, one gold per person, just one gold per person to see the demon. Whoa, one gold, and he puts his hand out. So I pay for myself. I'll pay. I'll pay. It's like in you go, and he turns to uh, start um, gesturing and shouting again. Uh, so you go in, uh, the first uh, thick curtain hangs down and you kind of have to step through it and then offset is another curtain so you walk through that as well and when you go inside um, you see, um, sure enough, those of you who have seen it before, which I believe is all of you, a demon. Um, now it is Kyle, uh, sorry, uh, so Tristan, Snow and uh, Tazros. Now, Snow and Tazros weren't really uh, aware of what this was. Uh, the fact that this man's called it a Triglavian is the first time you've heard uh, that term. Sir Tristan, you were aware of that from the previous... The, the people told you that they thought it might be that, but they didn't believe they existed. Um, but when you step inside, there is this white creature. Uh, it's tall and slender. It looks like a man, but it's not. It's, it's pale white, and it's got a slit where its mouth... Um, it, like it's just it's no lips it's just a slit in its face with fangs and teeth and it is shackled it's got like shackles on each arm and each leg and they're sort of pulling it into two posts so like holding it like like almost like a figure x and it's got another shackle around its neck which has got chains on both sides holding it um up and it's like struggling and it is in, like screaming this soundless scream you've seen before uh, no sound comes from it and can you each make a wisdom saving throw That's a good one. I don't Antazros. see saving throw on this one. It the should top. be, yeah, next to it, like, uh, I think you're still using the old sheet. sheet. Yeah, uh, let me change sheet, maybe that works. But if you, um, yeah, it's the numbers underneath it, there's like a saving throw and a regular modifier, so this should be... Yeah, I got, yeah, yeah, All right. Okay, so, um, those of you, um, who rolled a... 12 or more are okay so uh, Sir Tristan uh, this thing when it screams uh, it fucking terrifies you you remember uh, something like it like mauling you uh, in the Tanglewoods not not a few days before and almost ripping your throat out you still bear the scars on your neck and on your armor and the the fear overcomes you uh, as you uh, feel your, your knees start to quiver and you have a urge to just run out of the tent again So what do you guys do? So Tristan is terrified. He's backs away a little bit, but Tazros and uh, and Snow, you guys, you're like, oh wow, and you it's this very similar to what you uh, what you encountered the other day. Snow points out that she's seen this before and it's rather intimidating, and then she notices Tristan's reaction, so she suggests that they are like quickly move out of the tent. Tazros. That was just quite intrigued with the demon because, like, the previous time that was thought, like, it was just a bit form of fire. He haven't seen it, like, up close yet. Mm -hmm. So he just stands there and watches, like, 
watch it move and what it mm -hmm. does. It's struggling, and it's like looks like, like you can see almost like it's it's the muscles in its throat constricting mm -hmm. as if it was like screaming like that, like, but no sound comes out. It's completely silent. Um, it's got long claws on each hand. It's like it's like emancipated, um, and just pale, pale, pale white. Uh, its eyes are are red and piercing. Uh, and have no sign of any form of humanity, or um, it looks bestial uh, almost the way it's, it's glaring at you. Before okay. before we leave, can Snow make like a nature investigation check to see if there's anything she can learn for like future combat potentially? Sure. Um, so roll that. Damn. <laughs> it looks pretty fucking scary, man. Like you understand why uh, Sir Tristan is, uh, is is quaking in the back there. Um, and point to remember: very sharp claws, very sharp teeth. That's what you yeah. take away from that. Right before we leave, um, Tuzzles wants to uh, look at Snow. Like, so you're both white. Is that an older you? Snow looks offended. What do you mean? Is that an older me? It doesn't even have cat ears. It looks more like you than me. How does it, I'm not white. Like I don't like have fur and things like. Yeah, I'm, feet I'm and... a cat. That's not a cat. You're like a dwarf. That's like you, but tall and slender. But but, but all cats are evil, and you're like I see. I'm not evil. I've been helping you. What are you talking about? As you're as you're arguing, um, the elven man sticks his head to the door and he's like, "Come on, you've had your time. Out, out, out. Got people to people to go here." Yeah, we will walk out. Okay. Now, while this is happening, uh, back to Siege. So, Siege, you walk around uh, looking for uh, Lorenzo, uh, but you aren't successful in finding him. As you walk past um, the different stalls, you see people selling vegetables, meat. There's looks like a little um, like dis, uh, kind of performance area. There's like kind of these bars almost um, with uh, like selling different types of ale and wine and things like that. Um, there's there's a bard standing on this little stage, kind of performing. Um, uh, it looks it looks like a very nice little uh, festival. There's, these these benches and tables are full of people with ale and food, and everyone's having a nice time. All the different stalls are selling various different bits and pieces. Like some of them selling weapons and arrows, or um, some of them are uh, got you know, food and, and and various different. Like there's even a little stall which you can see has some cheese. But in the middle of all this, there is one stall uh, you see. This one here, which I'm pinging, I'm going to move you to. Um, it has um, a old looking woman uh, with very pale blue skin and white hair and in front of her on the um, uh, like counter is three red uh, looking potions which you would know because um, it's fairly common knowledge those are lesser potions of healing. So I'm gonna step up uh, under the uh, the awning of the uh, stall and uh, is you say pale blue skin? Um, yes, she's pale blue skin. Um, she's got uh, like white hair, uh, like sort of running down into braids. Uh, she is not, um, despite the, the skin, you've not seen someone with a skin that color. Is not a, um, a tiefling, but she is not a tiefling. She looks like an elf, actually. Yeah, she's minus the horns. <laughs> uh, good day, ma'am. Um, Good I've day. Noticed your, I noticed your potions. Uh, do you mind if I ask what they are? Oh, well, these are potions of healing, of course. I have three. Ah. And uh, how much are you charging on this day for uh, a potion of healing? Oh, well, no gold needed for these, uh, my lovely. I can give you these for just a minute of your time. That's an interesting offer. Uh... Uh, why not? Um, what what can I do for you? Oh no, I'll I'll not. I don't need it right now. But there you are. Thank you very much. She hands you the three potions, and she's like, "Have a great day." Uh, appreciate it. You too. She nods her head gently to you. What have you got me into? 
<laughs> uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll walk away and I'll try and find the main party. You can Did add you three, le of... yes, three lesser potions of healing. You can add that to your inventory. Uh, each one Thank is two d four plus two. Cool. So as you sort of head back round now, um, you get back to the um, the the tent that the the crier was in front, just as uh, snow. Sir Tristan and um, uh, Tazros come out. Uh, Sir Tristan looks pale. He looks paler than uh, when he was basically dead uh, like an hour before this. Did you want to think this was a good idea? Spending one gold to shit your pants again like you did in the forest. We need to find the person that owns that and have them destroy it. So that's, it was actually a that's demon. Too dangerous to... the, the man outside is still is calling and he's, t he's taking money off of a couple of new people now to send them in. So how are they keeping it in control? Did you notice that? They're not. Did you not hear it? Well, there must be something preventing it from... You can't hear anything because remember when it screams it's silent. There is no sound. There's a... It's so a it, it has like chains and stuff on poles. Like I saw that. It's not safe to have that thing here. Was it actually a demon? Better than a wheelbarrow, oh. right? Seize, did you find what you're looking for? No, I couldn't find Lorenzo anywhere. Uh, I, I badly want to find him. I need to explain to him what's happened at least, so he doesn't go home and just find his dead father in the barn. Well, have you at least found Evermere with his uh, ill stand? So, because uh, I need ill. <laughs> There's ale about every third stand, you got them drunken dwarf. Yeah, but it's not the dwarven ill. Yeah, well, if you want the dwarven ill, you'll have to go back to the broken drum. Uh, one of the stands, uh, stalls you passed, stand um, Siege, did have a, um, the dwarven man from the broken drum um, with a bunch of ills. Just so, you know, you would have known oh, Okay, well... Uh, I didn't notice. <coughs> uh, so, I'm also going to um, try and put Snow's gold back into her pouch. Okay, are you going to do it without her noticing? Gonna try. Okay, sleight of hand. Shit. Um, 13th by passive perception. Sleight of mediocrity. So, um,. Snow, you notice, um, or you feel a little um, ruffle at your pouch, and because it's obviously um, in a crowd, yeah, there's probably like a pickpocket or something going into your uh, into your coin purse. All right, so I grab my pouch and I pull out my flute and turn to see who's doing it, going, "What the heck?" Ah, my bad. I was trying to return your gold to you. What? You could just give it to me, Siege. Why are you gonna act all weird about it? I like to practice my skills. Yeah, well, you're doing a pretty poor job. Yeah, thanks for mentioning it. I did notice. So she she takes the gold pack that he gives her and puts it in her pouch. <laughs> okay. So um, everyone else sees this go on because it was right in front of you. Um, what 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 are you doing now? The, the the man is still calling. And the, some people run out. One person looks terrified and uh, he's uh, you know he runs away like looks really fucking scared. Um, and then uh, the the elven man steps forward again and it's like still calling. See the demon from Ravaros, the Triglavian demon. So what do we do now? We owe the Marchers twenty gold. You can also hear. Um, uh, you can also hear all the different colors for the different games and so on. Um, you, you see um, Tazros catches your eye specifically uh, because there is um, a bunch of town guardsmen um, sort of helming this stand with uh, a large solid stone cube. It's like two feet on each side resting on a thick metal bar like with a fulcrum wheel in the center. And uh, they're, they're calling out like, Hit the end with a hammer, enough to cause the stone to tip, and you can win the pot. And like some, some a man steps forward and he pays uh, pays some money, and he gets his hammer and he steps on you, and he swings it, and then the ha the metal kind of goes wobbles a bit, and the stone kind of like rocks, but it doesn't flip. And then the the guards go, oh, better luck next time, and they take his money and they drop it into the pot. Uh, all right, never mind, and it uh, just runs towards the stand. 
So um, they're, they're, they're still calling for this. They're like, yep, step up, step up, win the pot. Uh, I will take it. They look at you and they go, certainly, Sir Dwarf, step up, step up. It is one gold per attempt, one gold per attempt. I will give them one gold. So they take the and, gold uh, and they drop it in the pot. Say so like, uh, uh, well, you can give it back later when I'm done with this. Fantastic. Step up, sir. They hand you the hammer. And it would be a strength roll. Just a raw strength roll, please. Uh, I'm gonna rage for that. <laughs> nice. So, the dwarven man goes, Rah! with this hammer, raging. And then, he swings this hammer, and what happens? Uh, he smashes into it, and... Oh, <laughs> double oh. crit. So, you, you smash this hammer, you literally just go, Rah! with this hammer, and you swing it with such force, the, the metal bar itself like bends, but not before it launches this uh, this big stone cube, which then tumbles. So norm there's a couple of like divots where some people have knocked it before and it's fallen over, but you managed to knock it like clear over those, and it actually like almost hits the uh, the legs of some of the guards. They just go, oh fuck and jump out of the way at the, at the last moment, and they're like, oh my god, and like everyone's like woo -hoo -hoo, like cheering, like they can't. That's the, probably the greatest feat of strength they've ever seen that was incredible they're looking at the the metal bar which has now like got a bend in it from uh, from the hit and they're like my god oh, what? and he picks up the pot and he's like oh, you definitely earned this and he hands it to you uh, and it's got approximately 23 gold in it uh, thank you uh, see you later all right sir. bye and i'll run towards the group and like look what i got Oh my god, good job, Tars Tazros! Looks like you finally are useful for something! <laughs> I'm impressive. You can see the guards, like, three of them, like, like trying to lift this stone and move it back into position. Hey, Taz, if you want to make some more money, off to lift that stone for them. <laughs> Bloody human weaklings. Well, I think this is enough. Um, we can get some ale now. I'm buying. <laughs> so snow points out the fact that there's still this demon creature that everyone in the party does not like but it's in the middle of town should we like do anything or for once i'm with the knight i don't like leaving a demon of that nature loose and as much as it's chained it is definitely loose in a town like this it'll slaughter the population I think we all can agree to that. The question is uh, the method for dealing with it. It needs to be destroyed, but obviously, if we can get them to destroy it, that's, uh, you know. Well, I doubt we're going to convince them to do it in the middle of this. We'll have to wait until either they chain up for the night, or this place is empty. I don't feel comfortable doing it whilst there are so many people around. Well, since Tristan likes the guards so much, why don't you go ask them, sir? Well, I'm going to ask the guy who owns... I'm going to ask the Barker if I can talk to him. Sure, I mean, you, you, you can talk to him. You don't have to roll a persuasion check I'm to talk to him. Taking, <laughs> I'm taking him out the way. That's uh, he, won't, he, he, is, he is manning his stall. He's like, yes, what can I have you? Do you want to see the demon again? One gold. Hence me wanting to persuade him to talk privately. He will not. He is very busy, and he's uh, he's making a f killing. Uh, so he would he would be very very not interested in, in moving, and it would be pretty obvious from someone uh, like in your position that he. It'd be like going into like a really busy shop with lots and lots of people and asking the shop the only shopkeep to step away. <laughs> hey, you can do that when you're heavily armed and armored. You can speak to him there. He's willing to speak to you. Standing right there, he's like, "Yes, come see it again." Okay, he needs to destroy it. That thing oh, I, see. It <laughs> I could it. not do that. Have, have you seen the, the popularity of the demon? Like, why would I want to do that? I've I've paid a lot of money for this beast, and I will certainly make it back today and tomorrow in the festival. And destroy it, I would not do. <laughs> People will get hurt if he keeps that here. I've, I've, you've been in, I've seen you, Sir Knight. You've seen her chained up it is. It's not getting out of here. It's been uh, under my protection for days now. A 
absolutely no way. And he like jingles his bag of gold. <laughs> Can I poke Snow and uh, say quietly to her, would you mind showing him your scars, Lassie? I think that may give him a better indication of what that thing's capable of. Alright, so Snow nods and walks up to stand next to Tristan and the man. She goes, see these? That I fought one of those before and it nearly killed me. These things are mean. If that thing gets out, it's going to slaughter the town. She well, it's not getting one. out, clearly. Did you just not go see it? Yes, you did. Have you been mauled? No, of course not. It is chained up. Do you go Do you go to a, a zoo and say, oh, you can't have a bear there. A bear once killed my cousin's son's brother. No, of course you don't. The bear is chained up. Just like the demon. Yeah, and chaining up and animals And as it's happening, he's like, one second. Sorry. And he takes a couple of gold off some people. He's like, please, the demon. Come see the demon. Yeah, but chaining things up is real cruel. That thing's going to get out and murder. Would him. you rather we release it? And he laughs. I think you'd put it down. Absolutely. Why? Why? Why would I put this piece down? Because it, it is. People. It is the number one attraction of the Lashkai Harvest Festival. Of course, I would not put it down. Look at all these people. Would you deprive them of such glorious entertainment? No. I'm sure it'll make history when it kills half of them. He laughs. He's like, "There's no way it's getting out of all of these chains. We have chained it up with six chains." Six yeah, well, whole not? chains. Why not more? Why only six? He laughs. He's like, listen, it's fine. It's been here. We've had it for days. It's not a problem. If you want to pay, you can go and see it again. However, I must ask you, please step aside and let more paying customers come in. Come in. So Snow puffs up, you know, like when cats get really upset. So she puffs up real big and does this whole like to this guy. She goes, if this thing gets out, I want you to remember this conversation because we're not saving you. He's like, do you know, if you want, you could join my traveling zoo as well. I'm sure many people would be interested to see such a, a creature as you. Well, maybe if you're more open-minded, you would know more tabaxi exists and we're actually not that exotic. He laughs and uh, someone else comes running out like in terror from the, the tent and he's like, step up, step up. Anyway, it's been a pleasure, but I must continue my business. And he goes back to doing what he was doing. I've got one final question before you before you leave. Mm -hmm. You mentioned you bought it. Where did you buy that thing? Well, if we're talking business, I suggest come back when the festival is closed for the night. We can have a discussion then. But really, right now, I must insist that you just step away and let me make my money. I'll step back and uh, talk to the group. So, options then. You can, this fool clearly won't be parted from his money. Do we wait and risk it and come back later the night when there's no one here? Or do we look at other options? Uh, what I we're mean... talking about? Uh, I'm just looking for ill. Uh, I was <laughs> distracted. Okay, so while this is happening then, uh, Tazros, you wander off around the uh, festival and you see uh, the stand. It's next to the little stage um, at the side of the festival and it has uh, the dwarven man you recognize from uh, the Broken Drum, Avamir Grimtor, uh, and he is serving uh, ale. He's, he's not using a tap this time, he's just got a big keg and he's he's dunking one then another and he's setting out like five or six at any one time and then people are buying them and he's resetting more of them. Um, and yep, yeah, he is over there selling his ale. Uh, I'm just smashing one gold like on the, on the stand and say like, uh, should this be enough again? Yeah, there should be plenty. It's obviously festival prices, so that's enough for one dwarven ale. The finest, though, of course. And he slides one okay. forward to you. Um, and does a such rumbling and checks down another four gold. Like, give me more. He's like, certainly! A great fellow dwarf who loves to drink just like me. And he, uh, he slides like five towards you. Uh, well, that's just, just like starts chuck down without any taking breaths in between. <laughs> okay, after the after the last one, uh, can you give me a Constitution save? Of course I can. Tazros is now really fucking drunk, um, so he's like seeing seeing double. Um, he's just like 
can't can't really stand up at this point. So uh, he finishes his five ales just as you guys finish your conversation, and you hear Taz Ross uh, like singing some dwarven sea shanty. Um, and you look over and you see him, and he appears to be walking at this kind of angle, even though he's walking in a straight line, because dwarves are very good at being drunk. So he's permanently falling over, but not falling over. Um, and you see him kind of sh- sh- shambling towards you with a, a, an empty uh, uh, ale mug and some stains on his chest. So, Snow sees Tazros, turns back to the group and goes, Well, like, maybe we should just enjoy the festival for now, and then we can regroup later tonight. Just like Taz, like we should just do what Tazros is doing and have fun. Well, as long as we're in the festival grounds, we are fairly close to respond if it breaks free. That's just not a bad shot. Don't, don't get that hammered. Be in fighting tip for fight, please. Aye, right, so? no worries about that. I'm gonna try and find this bloody farmer, Lorenzo. I'm gonna wander off again. Okay, so see you wander off, and um, after a while this time you do manage to find him. He's behind some of the uh, the stalls, and he's sort of like helping out his uh, like a like a busybody. So he's like refilling the the small kegs with like the giant keg for, uh, that's behind the uh, the stands, if that makes sense. Um, and you spot him as you wander around. Lorenzo, can I have a word in private? Like I've uh, got some news. All right, no worries, no worries. Uh, did you get my dad back? All right, yeah. Your dad got back to the farm, yeah. Fantastic, fantastic. And he's like still busy, like working away. Look, I go up to him. I, I, I can't thank you enough up. for that. I know I could only pay one gold, but thank you very much for for taking him back. That was really generous of you. He's just, he, he's too old to be out by himself. We really need to look after him. He's um he's had a hard life, but you know I want him to have a, a comfortable life uh, in his retirement. You know he's he can't see anymore, and you know, but he's my dad. What can I do? <laughs> I love him. Lorenzo, look at me. I need to talk to you away from this for a second. Listen, I can't step away. I'm, I'm, I'm working, and I, I we need the money. Like um... I know you need the money, and it's for that reason that I'm giving you your gold back. And... Uh, you, no, you don't have to. Do that. You, you, you completed your side of the deal. Like I'm, I'm not, I'm not a fraudster. You please, please. I offered you that gold. You take that gold. Do your father's do. dead, Lorenzo. And he like drops the thing he was carrying. He's like. I thought you said he got back safe. What, what do you mean? What do you mean he he's dead? Get back safely now. Will you come away from this and talk to me for a moment? No. What? What happened? You say he got back safely, but that. But now you tell me he's dead. What? What the? What the fuck? Your father was delivered back safely. We found your brother Giorgio in the barn, and uh, this is what I saw. I said he would be right. Yes. You remember the creature that shot out of your house the other day? The fucking rat thing. I. Did that, get my, that, did that get my dad? That was your brother. Your brother was a were-rat, and he also a what? bit what? your father. No. Yes. No, no. You. He slaps you in the shoulders like, Ah, oh, I get it now. <laughs> you you weird demon people you're, you, with your strange sense of humour. Nice one. I really must get on, though. Your brother's in custody of the town guard. Your father is dead at the barn. Here is his ring, and here's your gold. I'm very sorry. He takes the ring and he's like... Wait... You... I'm are sorry, you, are you... I'm this serious. Is, this is a joke? This is, like, I wouldn't did he, did he set you up like this with the ring? This is the ring I found this morning in the guard's purse and oh, I gave no. back to your father before trying to help him. <laughs> I am very sorry, but your father, unfortunately... There's some dead. blood on the ring from when the hand got dropped off. <laughs> and he's like, uh, uh, and he, he he's like, uh, and he just turns and he like starts to like like back away, and then he turns and he starts to run off. And just let him go. Okay, you do so. Um, do you really want to let him find the body? Well, what else can I do? <laughs> oh man. I've explained to him about it, like, you know, and I've given him his money back and his father's ring. I've tried to be as honorable as I can. You know, I'm a fucking tiefling. They're going to suspect me. Bollocks to it. All right. Um, meanwhile, um, the rest of you, you have uh, a very drunk dwarf. Um, what, what do you want to do? There's, there's, there's a bunch of games. There's collars. There's, there's stands selling various bits and pieces. Um, the uh, snow and 
uh, Tazros and Siege, you spot uh, over here uh, the kind of like blacksmith station. You see uh, Tavom and he gives you a wave and he's like doing a, like a smithing demonstration. And there's a couple of people who were uh, sort of doing a show fight in this arena before and they're taking a little break, they're sitting down and they're having like a, a mug of ale between them and just sort of like uh, obviously getting ready for the next show. And there's some people like trying the different carnival games. What would you like to do? Um, is there anywhere where I could like, where Snow could perform or like compete in some way for music and money? Yeah, yeah. So there's a little sort of stage round um, at the side uh, with the sort of the bars all around it, and there's quite a lot of people like, all sort of drinking and sitting. There's someone performing at the moment with a, with a lute, um, but it looks like they're almost finished the song. People are like sort of like cheering and like, you know, it's still it's sort of like early afternoon now. So people have like people are a few beers in, um, but they're not like absolutely you know blittered yet. Um, but it's definitely it's a jovial atmosphere. All right, so I'm gonna cast Bardic Inspiration on myself, and then I'm gonna go up and perform. Okay, performance, please. Oh, fuck, <laughs> and then I use Bardic Inspiration. Okay, 14, not bad. Okay, so it's it's all right, it's average. Um, people that are just as polite as uh, previous, uh, the guy with the loot. Um, you see some people sort of like nodding their head, other people are sort of just, they're ignoring the music, it's background music, uh, and they're sort of continuing to have a conversation and, and drink. Um, so Tristan and Herzana, uh, you have a drunk dwarf with you, uh, what, what do you want to do? Uh, me and Elaine are gonna make excuses and see fortune tellers, seers, and various, uh, cunning women of, uh, of the festival. Yeah, so there's various yeah, people like, uh, that seem to be doing that kind of stuff. Um, you can wander around. Um, Tazros, what, what were you going to say there? Uh, I'm just uh, um, like drunk talk, like double speech and just like pointing at random things, random people and just enjoying. That's yeah. what I'm doing. Uh, so you spot... Um, uh, uh, so Tristan, sorry, you spot... Uh, uh, woman with a stall with nothing on it uh, and she's got like what look like tarot cards or something and she's laying them out um, and uh, that's what you see. Meanwhile, um, what are you doing Harzana? Or what would you like to do? I think I would follow uh, Tristan and Elaine just go around and uh, look at stuff okay. and uh, judge the other woman with the tarot card because clearly she's doing it wrong. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, as you're heading over, and I'm assuming uh, uh, Sir Tristan, uh, sorry, uh, Tazros is heading with them. You, as you wander towards this uh, sort of like fortune telling stand, you you pass uh, someone uh, like a wine merchant, and um, he's like uh, like trying to sell his, his wines, and he's like, try the northern vintages, try the northern vintages. They're not particularly subtle, but make no mistake, they have some power. If this wine was any stronger, it would leap out the bottle and mug you itself. Only five silver pieces! Five silver pieces! Who wants some? Where is it from? From the north, of course! That's... a big place. Well, yes, of course! This one's actually from Decline, the region of Decline, from the northern vineyards. Oh, Decline. Yes. Which part of Decline? Oh, I just imported. <laughs> you, you, it doesn't even say on the bottle. It just says Northern Decline. Can I roll inside? Sure. Let's see. Looks like a bottle of wine. It says on it Northern Decline. Oh, well, well, I could use some wine in a long time. Okay, so it's five silver pieces, um, and it's very strong, very strong wine. Might even be fortified. You're not really sure, but nice though. So Tristan, I take it you're trying to determine the history of the wine. It turns out I know uh, precious little about the history of uh, of Northern Decline wine. Yes, yeah, so you can tell that this wine used to be grapes, um, and you're like, hmm, yes, and you explain the process to Elaine. You never know when that information might come in handy. <laughs> Are you still heading towards the little fortune teller stand? Aye. Okay. Uh, the woman uh, running it seems to be, she's got like pale blue skin and long white hair. And she's like, step up, have your fortune told.
I absolutely will. Of course. One gold piece per reading. I'm pretty sure I have basically no gold pieces, so that's that's the, the assumption I've been working on, so I'll like shrug at Elaine in case she's got anything we've picked up. It is it is against our code, but you never know. She has a gold that Snow handed out earlier on to see the demon. She didn't go in, so she she still has hers. Uh, so she hands it over, and uh, the woman uh, tells you, "Stand in front of me, my dear," and she stares at you like right into your eyes. And she deals out some cards, and then she looks at you, and without looking away, she turns over a card, and she doesn't look at the card. She looks at you, and she starts to de describe uh, the card. And she's like, hmm, this card is Geros, the god of war, conflict, and aggression. You have combat, perhaps. Something a con something conflicting you in the future. Uh, Hassan is just looking over Tristan's shoulder and just enjoying seeing that she's stating something that's really obvious. And she turns over the next card and she's like interesting this is chaste some known as geros demon of the aggressive uh, demon of the aggressiveness and violence you have poor self-control it's a flaw that you you keep deep inside yourself and you try and mask but it will come out and she turns over the next card and she's like, hmm, fascinating. This is Umili, the goddess of family, relationships, and unity. It's very rare that you see these cards in this particular combination. In, this infers that you have conflict and perhaps betrayal in your future. You will betray someone by the looks of things, and they might be your family, or perhaps you will find your family in doing so. It's too vague at this point. But still, it's uh, it's something that will make me blanch. This is a, this is a, exactly the opposite of the kind of things that I want to be hearing. She's like, I only read the cards. I I have no control over them. Elaine's like, whoa. Presumably just as offended as I am. <laughs> we'll, uh, so, we'll move swiftly on there. So the, the festival will continue throughout the afternoon um, and into the evening. Uh, if you guys... as, as we uh, move on away from the fortune teller, I'll pull up my own deck and show it to, uh, to Tristan and said, you should just have asked me. <laughs> They're like... Like the uh, the person that turns into stars and the person that uh, executes hostages. <laughs> so if if you guys want to do anything, you uh, tell me. Otherwise, the um, festival will continue throughout the uh, afternoon into the evening. Um, you don't see any more sign of Lor Lorenzo siege. Um, Snow, you continue to perform. Um, you have some good ones, you have some bad ones. Uh, eventually, uh, someone else comes along to perform. Um, the uh, the is, game... Uh, yes? Is it possible to squeeze a short rest in? Um, if you wanted to go to the side and, and sit down and, and sort of rest while the, this was going on, that would be perfectly fine. Um, the, the, you, you can watch people play the different games. Like Some people like shooting the bows and arrows, but they're obviously a bit drunk and they like miss wildly and everyone cheers. Um, there's like generally as people get more drunk they're like less good at the game so the, the, the carnival runners are taking more and more um, uh, off of the of the townsfolk who are trying to like do these things you don't see anyone else manage to successfully knock over the stone at any point um, it's, it's pot slowly climbing back up again and you mentioned, yeah. sorry mm -hmm, go on you mentioned there's uh, an archery section is there a contest mm -hmm. 
Yes, so um, there's two uh, town guards just standing there and there's three different archery like targets at uh, different distances. And the guards are like, you know, step up, step up, try eagle eye! Hit the close target, and then you get to win a rat, and they have a cage with a bunch of rats in it. Pet rat, take it home! Uh, you hit the middle one, you can win a wooden sword, great for all the kids. And the far one, you hit that, you win, and he, they have a little, this is where you get the little um, intricate doll of Empress Katiz Tashmark on. Um, and he tells you if you're going by that it's uh, one silver piece per three shots. Uh, why not? I fancy a pet rat. Could be something amusing. So you're aiming for the, the close one? <laughs> yeah. So he hands you a bow. It's not your bow. It's a smaller bow. It's like a lot more flexible, so it's not as powerful. It, like It wouldn't shoot very far, and it probably wouldn't shoot through uh, like armor or anything like that. Uh, but it's the kind of bow that you would, you know, Using this situation where you didn't want to, you know, act miss and then just impale a child running around or something like that. Uh, oh. So he, he hands it to you and he hands you three arrows which are kind of blunted in the end. And he's like, step up, choose your targets. Okay, so I'm going to fire one at the uh, the close target, see if I can hit that. Okay, roll so. with, um, with your, just roll with your short bow. Okay. <laughs> so you, you line up and I guess you're not used to the, the feel of the draw and as you let go it kind of like pings a little bit and the arrow just goes and sails over the uh, uh, the target and into the, the grass behind it <laughs> oh better luck next time better luck next time two more arrows try again of course you're welcome to try again uh, I might as well uh, make a proper pass of myself then I'm going to try one in the middle and one at the long range one in that case okay so go for the middle roll for that so this one, um, it strikes into the target, uh, right on the edge, almost missing it. Just ping into the like, hey, gentle little uh, round of applause, and like one more, sir, one more. Yeah, go on then. Are you and, going for the uh, far one, yeah. Yep. <laughs> so this time you you pull it back, and as as you uh, as you release it, you, I guess you're a bit still shaken from the deem or something because you released the wrong hand. Uh, so rather than releasing the one holding the arrow, you release one holding the bow, and the bow kind of goes thwink and knocks the arrow backwards, and it lands in the in the ground behind you. And everyone has everyone has a great laugh at your expense, um, and they present you with a small wooden sword, great for children, about one and a half feet long. But there you are, sir. You're 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 uh, a fine archer to be sure. I uh, go and find some dwarven ale. You can do. Tazos knows all about that. Tazos is currently uh, laying in the middle of the road. <laughs> As like a star, if I passed out. <laughs> I'll, I'll go and sit by Tazros then and keep him company. <laughs> okay. So the evening winds on. Um, the the festival gets a bit more like drunk. The sun starts to go down, and eventually, um, like the stands start to like shut up shop, and um, people are kind of milling out and leaving. The place gets a bit quieter. May um uh, as people are shutting down shop, may can Snow go and see Tavon over mm -hmm. by his blacksmith shop. You can, yeah. He's like finishing, like packing up his uh, stuff for the day, and he's like, "Snow, hello, welcome. Did you catch any of the uh, demonstrations?" Uh, yeah, like a little bit. I I saw you what like showing off a little bit. I was over playing bard stuff, but I was curious since like the crowds kind of dispersed. Do you have any like small crossbows, like a hand crossbow that could fit my hands? And she holds up her tiny paws. Oh, um, I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not that type of. Uh, you really need to go to like a Fletcher or, or, or something or someone specialising in that kind of things. I'm more like s swords and axe type uh, type, uh, you know, uh, work. Oh, okay. Thank you. And she wanders off. So those of you who um, have your rooms still in the uh, the broken drum, um, that those are still there, by the way. Um, what would you like to do? Festival's now pretty much wrapping up. Everyone's closing up. I'm going to hang around and wait for everyone to leave and before trying to go back to the uh, owner of that demon tent. Mm -hmm. So um, the place is pretty quiet now. There's, there's people still around. Like, there's a couple of like you know, really drunk people like passed out against like trees and things like that. There's one drunk dwarf who you're kind of leaning on uh, who's just sort of waking up. Um, and yeah, so it seems like he's like closing up the, the tent um, he's in his robes, um, and he's, yeah, he's there. All right, laddie, where did you buy? Oh, that hello, you're from? back. I've got no time for mucking around. Those things are very dangerous. They almost bit that's, my friend in half. I know you've got it dreamed up. That's why I'm not they are in... so attractive to the general populace. Everyone wants to be scared. Yeah, I understand that. 
completely and I understand you're a businessman I understand you're trying to make money I want to know where you bought it from look I'll tell you what All right. he looks around and he's like I can tell you where I got it it's not a problem but I know that look in your eye I don't want to I want you to guarantee me that you aren't you're going to keep your keep your hand out of my business and I don't want um, him knowing that it's me that sent you there I'll guarantee you that I won't tell a soul where I got the information from. If that demon gets loose, I'm not going to he protect chortles. you, though. It won't get loose. And yeah, he, like, well, he, say walks that the, he walks around the side of the tent and he gestures at a, a very sturdy looking iron cage, which has got like a tarp over it now. Like You can just see the bottom of it. Okay. Like I said, I'm not going to try and undermine you, but if that thing gets out, I'm going to destroy it, and I won't tell a soul. If that thing gets out, there's from. more. There's more pressing things to worry about. Now, I uh, I got it from a local merchant actually. Um, I heard about it uh, through the grapevine, as you were, and I forget his name. Something's it's just really difficult to remember. I don't know what would kind of refresh my memory, but mm, nice. His well, name's escaping me. He's rubbing his fingers together in front of your face. That's cute, but uh, I've got uh, a fine edge on me. I say, fingering my uh, rapier, and I don't appreciate my time being wasted. We'd had enough of that earlier. Um, roll intimidation. He, he sort of sniggers a bit. He's like, "You you want that information? Information is a cost." Okay. I am going to <laughs> speak to him in Infernal using Devil's Tongue. Not going to use Vicious Mockery, but I'm going to speak to him in a language he won't understand and just basically recite a children's novel at him, but uh, <laughs> do it in, in uh, Infernal. Okay. Um, you can roll Intimidation again. Uh, this time you can have advantage. <laughs> nice. Uh, he, he, like... Like starts and he's like, uh, "Look, whatever, just don't eat my children." Um, he leans in. And he's like, "I got it from a local merchant. Uh, his name's uh, Jorg Dumont." Appreciate your time, laddie. And remember, walk away. You didn't hear this from me, and he heads off. So I'm gonna rejoin the main group and uh, explain to them what I found. Uh, or what you know the information about about the local merchant, and um, see if they want to go there first and talk to him, or if they want to hang around. Thoughts, what? folks. What time of night is it? Is it like midnight or before? No, it's like sort of like eight, nine o'clock at night at this point. You know, it's just now like the sun is down. There's still a little bit of light coming over the horizon, but it's it's dark, and um, like the taverns are busy. There's people still on the streets. It's, it's still a festival day. Uh, there's still plenty of people kind of around, but it's um, it's it's late evening. Yeah, I'm down to go find this guy if you'd like. It's not that late. He should still be up. Isn't it risky to leave this place if it escapes? As much as I dislike that uh, charlatan, I think it's about as safe as it can be. There's minimal people here. It's chained up inside a metal box. I don't like leaving it, you're right, but I want to go and find where this merchant got it from and if he's got any more, because if he's got more of them in the centre of the town, then we could be in more trouble. Yeah. Good point. Sir Knight? So, Hosanna and um, uh, Sir Tristan, it's not when when Siege tells this to you, do you tell them who, who's got it, the merchant? You tell them the name and everything? Yeah. So uh, you you've heard the name before, um, Sir Tristan and Hosanna. Um, the it's the guy who almost bought the farm. Yeah. Good. We we're planning to have words with him anyway. You know him then? Know of him. Uh, do you mind if I ask how? It's uh, kind of a weird coincidence. He was. Um... No. He was planning to buy a farm that we stayed at. Uh, the current owners of the farm didn't really like him. 
seems something shaky about him. Well, if he's dealing in demons, then yeah, no fucking shite. There's something weird about him. Right. Let's go find him then. Okay. So we're gonna take the party and try and find this guy. Sure. So <laughs> where are you after? Uh, he's, just as a, a side note, you said he was a merchant from the town, yeah. Correct. So I know you're eating. <laughs> uh, okay. So I'm um, gonna head into town and should we ask get the broken drum? See if we can get some more information. Would they perhaps yeah. know? Okay. So let's head towards the broken drum then, because uh, I think that's the right direction, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. To town, yeah. Yeah. So let's head past the broken drum. Uh, we will ask, uh, what's her name? Where's it gone? Uh, Galinda, uh, if she knows of uh, Jorg de Mont. So you go in. It's busy. Lots of people, lots of very drunk people. They've had a great day. Some people look a bit sun kissed. You know, they've been out too much. Some of them uh, sort of almost like passed out in the corner because um, it's been a great day for everybody. Everyone's had a lovely time at the festival. There's um, people eating, you hear um, like, you know, the, the shout of uh, lots of drunken people in a very good jovial mood as you enter the, the bar. You see uh, Galindi, she's always busy, every time you run into her she's always looks like she's rushed off her feet. But she always seems to have a situation under control and she, sure enough, she comes around, she sees you come in, she's like, you here for drinks again? Just grab a seat anywhere and I'll be around as soon as possible. Uh, we'll be back for drinks later, Galinda. We need to ask you a quick, brief question. I know you're busy. I won't waste your time. Make it quick. Make it quick. Make it quick. Come on. Come on. Where can busy, I find busy, busy. Jorg de Mont? Jorg de Mont? Yes. Uh, well, go out. Turn right. Uh, back house at the end of the road. Can't miss Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you. And we'll leave again. <laughs> so you do. You walk out. Well, that is conveniently close. I hope Taz is sobered up by now because this is going to get messy. <laughs> so what? He is not sobered up I, by now. Oh, I, I, before, before we go inside, uh, okay. If I had a short rest uh, during the stay at the festival grounds, can I use my hit die to get some uh, health points? Yep, you had a, a short rest. You clear that. That's fine. You can use your hit die. Oh, Azana, are you wounded? I've picked up a potion. You're more than welcome to it if you need it. Keep it for later. You sure? What about you, Sir Knight? Uh, I'm all good. Okay. Let's uh, go and pay this Yorg a visit then. So, um, where I'm hanging on the map, I hope you can see, um, is uh, a large house. It's got like walls and fences and gates around it, and there's a couple of uh, foot soldiers outside uh, the main entrance. Uh, they aren't wearing um, the same. Uh, uniform is the sort of the, the town guard that you've seen. Uh, it's, it's a different uniform, and they're standing on the side of the door, and they sort of eye you as you walk up to them. I'm uh, gonna let the uh, bright, shiny knight take lead and just drop back with my hood up, so I'm not as immediately obvious. State your yeah. business. We're uh, we're looking for. Uh... Yorg. Mr. Dumont is not accepting guests right now. Well... We, <laughs> we're, we're not leaving until you let us in, so... Then you'll be waiting until the morning. I suggest you either wait on the street all night, or return then. I will attempt to cast a charm person on him. So you're going to cast a spell, which has verbal and semantic components, right? In front of these guards. Yeah. Well, how, just... how many guards? No, 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 no. no. Uh, how many guards are there? Two that you can see. No, 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 no. Okay, then that's probably a bad idea. So, you can seeing that, you. You can do whatever you want. Seeing that Harzana might potentially take action, Snow speaks up first and goes, "Well, excuse us, we have a." business obligation with Yorg, and if you're going to turn him away from earning his money, I'm pretty sure he won't appreciate that. I'm going to roll Persuasion. Mm -hmm. Yes, you may. 14. Mr. Dumont does not have any appointments at this hour, 
Please return in the morning should you wish to have an appointment. How far away are the guards from us? Um, conversation distance, so like five feet. Okay. I'm going to um, kind of lean into the guy and whisper the phrase traffic ending demons in a threatening and gravelly way. He seems puzzled by your statement more than anything else. Um, he is not intimidated by you. Um, he just seems a bit like... He leans away as you lean in like... Sir, please step back. From where I am, what can I see with regards to the property and potentially another way of gaining entrance? So from where you can see, it's like a... You know these like... Um, like American style, like plantation houses type thing with like the columns and stuff like that. You know those okay. ones, um, and it's got like a large ground. So the guards you're standing in front of are standing in front of the gate, which leads into the grounds. Uh, the house itself is another like twenty feet into the into the grounds, and all round is like a, a small stone wall of about like three feet high, and then large uh, metal wall with spikes that's about ten feet high, kind of all around. Well, maybe not ten, more like it's ten feet total, say, so, uh, all the way around. Um, if it's far, from where you can see, just goes up to the side and round. Can I and see... <laughs> On the main house, yes. Okay. Are there um, any trees nearby to the fence? You can see there's plenty of trees in the grounds, none of them on the outside. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna... Whilst um, Sir Tristan is... Um, blustering at the guard trying to get in <laughs> I'm gonna um, pull snow to one side and say uh, this is gonna sound a bit weird but uh, how about I uh, try and boost you over this fence and you then... uh, okay I guess so okay so myself and uh, snow are gonna like drop back from the main party and then try and get out of line of sight of the guards and uh, I'm gonna try and chuck her over the fence Stealth, then, please. <laughs> Both of you. So, the guards are relatively engaged with watching what's going on with um, uh, Sir Tristan trying to whisper intimidatingly at them. Uh, so they don't see you step off to the side. And you look like you can see a spot where um, you could probably throw the cat over the wall without being um, easily spotted. Okay. Um, would I be able to climb over after her once I'd boosted her over? You can certainly try. <laughs> okay. So, um, Snow, are you ready? I'm going to cut my hands and like put my back to the fence to uh, show, show I'm ready to like boost her over. Alright. So, Snow, despite her looks gracefully steps on the hands to try and climb on top of Siege to climb over the wall. Okay. And I'm gonna, yeah. So it's gonna be athletics from Siege and acrobatics from Snow. Okay. We're both critically <laughs> on our second roll! Oh dear. Good thing those weren't your first rolls, otherwise it would have been fucking spectacular. So Siege, oh, that could you, you put your hands out like you described and uh, Snow steps forward. Her chunky little cat feet land on your hand, and you whoop, and you give her a boost, and she goes up, and she's able to uh, basically grab the top of uh, the um, the fence and kind of like flip her uh, cat booty over it and sort of slide down the other side. <laughs> right. Okay. And uh, can I then attempt to follow her? Yep. So it's simply athletics to climb. Okay. To the top. <laughs> oh dear. So you climb and you're like sort of going up like this and you make it to the, almost to the top and then your foot, you're, you know that way where you're climbing a wall and you're kind of pushing your feet against it and holding back like that? Your foot slips and <laughs> as as that happens the other one slips as well and both your feet go through the, 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 the between the poles and you bang and you slide down and fall onto your back. And you're a little bit winded from that hit and you're um Demon's sausage. <laughs> I can't believe you just said that. Right, okay. So Snow's on her own then. 
let's not uh, try and find a way in for the rest of us. <laughs> So, seeing the kind of disaster that has just happened, Snow kind of, she walks away from the guards to look around the edge of the fence sort of boundary to see if there's like any sort of back gate for the garden or anything like that that she could open from the inside. All good. Almost filled my con save trying to eat. Um, so, give me a stealth to do this. So, despite being a white cat person um, trying to hide, you're able to slink around the shadows of the edge of this property and um, you notice that there is another gate at the back. It's much smaller. It looks like a sort of like garden gardener's entrance or something like that. All right, so I, I go up to it and I unlock it and then Do I try you to... Now. Get... Do you unlock it? Wait. I'd, I'd wait, like to know where you got the key from. <laughs> oh, it's locked by a key. Oh, I thought it was a latch. Okay. No, no, no. it's locked. Like, um. So I see so... that it's, I see that it's locked by a key. There's no <laughs> guards around this on any way, shape, or as form. As far as you can tell, right now. I mean, give me a perception right now. So you can see that there are some guards, but they're like sort of standing at the like looks like the back door to the main uh, building, but they're not really paying too much attention to the um to the grounds, like this inside, they're sort of just guarding the back door, they're just sort of standing there in conversation. You can't hear what they're saying, they're just chatting at low level. Alright, so with my super high stealth, I'm gonna hide in a bush near the secondary fence, and I know that Siege has, what are they called, like thieves tools? Uh -huh. so I'm gonna hide in the bush and make normal cat meowing noises, hoping <laughs> that my team will realize that it is me calling for their attention. Okay, um, the rest of you are in the front, so uh, Sir, Sir Tristan's just finished um, trying to whisper threateningly to the guards. Um, Siege walks back uh, and he lo looks like he's limping a little bit. He looks a little bit uncomfortable. And after maybe 10, 15 seconds, you hear the sound of a cat meowing somewhere. It sounds like a regular cat. Much so, like you would hear in any town, really, to be honest. I I'm gonna... Well aware that Snow's on the other side of the boundary, I'm gonna try and recover my wounded pride and try and find where that's coming from because yeah it would make sense that she'd try and signal us okay so... chase the sound of a random cat to assuage your pride <laughs> well i know snow's over there so it's like you know i wasn't able to get over the fence which luckily none of you saw but snow did so i'm gonna try and find her so are you going back by yourself then um unless anyone else wants to come with me or are you still uh, haranguing the guard? I could climb the wall, but that is literally illegal. So, <sighs> well, right, I'm, okay. I'm going to follow him. So the the, yeah, the guards at the front door watch you guys walk off um, and round the corner. And uh, see, so based on you knew where you lopped her over, and uh, it sounds like it's coming from that direction. Uh, you can, without too much difficulty, determine. Uh, the rough area where the, the bush is that there's a cat meowing from. Okay, so I'm going to casually wander past and just whisper harshly uh, rather than calling out, Snow! So Snow the... Yeah, so Snow pokes her head out hearing her party walk by. <laughs> she goes, guys, guys, there's some guards at the back door there, but you guys, if you have thieves tools, there's a fence door right here. You guys can break in. And then she pops her head back back in the bush just to make sure, just in case somebody else comes by. So barely checking my stride at all, I just keep moving down past the fence and uh, look for the gate that uh, Snow mentioned. Yep, she's it's certainly like a cat. There. It's right there. It's not far from where, uh, you know, she was. Okay, so uh, I'd like to check for traps uh, and then try and pick it. <laughs> okay. Give me an investigation. Looks perfectly safe. Okay. And then give me a thieves tools. I will uh, cast uh, guidance on him. Ooh. Gives you one d4 on top of that, I believe. Uh, so I'm going to. So the 17 uh, and your thieves tools and your expert nimble fingers, uh, you're able to 
work away at this lock until you hear a as the latch uh, unlatches from inside the mechanism. Okay. I'm going to slowly open it enough so I can actually just peek through and see where the guards are that Snow mentioned earlier. Okay. Um, with the fact that Snow told you where to expect them, you can sl- leap, uh, sl- slide your head through the little bit of the gate and just past some bushes that are just barely obscuring. Like, if you opened the gate wide, it would be a line of sight, but the edge of the, the gate is slightly obscured by these bushes. You can see the two figures uh, on the back porch of the of the house. Right, okay. Um, so I'm going to leave the gate as it is, just like, just wedge a rock under it so it doesn't move, and then relay all this to the party and uh, see what they want to do. So guys, you're saying there are guards there? There's two guards. If I open the door, if I open this gate, they're going to see us. How and do you want the guy who we're looking for is inside. From what the guard at the front gate said, yes. So no, why don't we just ask the guard where he is? Because they're not going to let us in. I mean, we're already in. The gate is open. No, if we open the gate, we're going to have to fight the guards. I don't like that in the first place. And I'd imagine Sir Knight is going to have a thing those tools to say about me picking a goddamn lock and getting entry illegally. Well, I we, mean, have a, we, we have don't... a drunk. We have a drunk dwarf. Why can't uh, you go out to the front and make a fuss and then make all the guards go there? That's That's actually not a bad idea. Yeah! Yeah, Taz Rose! Snow whispers from the bush. (laughs) Just ask them nicely, and then you don't have to fight them. They didn't let us in the first time when we asked them nicely, and then when we intimidated them. Right, okay. Why don't you, Taz, go around to the front again and ask them nicely to let you in? They might have changed the guard by now. Taz just walks away to the front. Oh god. Okay, they see you approaching again, and they kind of like you see them kind of exchange side glances at each other and almost like roll their eyes. Like, oh god. State your business. Uh, hello, fellow man. Um, can I pass? No. Why not? Because <laughs> Mr. Dumont is not seeing any visitors right now. As I, I mentioned I to your to, uh, to your companions. Please return in the morning, should you wish to seek an audience. But, what if I want to pass, but not see that guy? Then you will not be passing here. But you said I cannot pass, because I cannot see that guy? Because he's busy or whatever? Maybe he wants to drink? If they look at each other and he's like, should, Do I need to call for your friends? Clearly they're the ones looking after you. I don't see friends. Do you want to be my friend? No. Do you want to drink? No, I'm on duty. Ah, that's fine. Nobody cares. Please, sir. And he sort of like puts his hand out almost to like kind of like gently push you away. He's like, please, sir, step back. And I suggest you. And shakes it. He sort of uh, lets his hand get shaken. He's like, oh, jeez. He smells the, 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 the ale on you, and he's, he turns to his buddies like, Fucking dwarfs, man. Listen. Come back in the morning, alright? Mr. Dumont is not seeing guests right now. Can at, least, at least use the bathroom. Relieve yourself in the goddamn forest for all I care. Okay. And he lowers like his pants and just starting to pee down. In the forest, the, please! Forest. Oh. The guards are just, like, disgusted. And then I'll uh, walk away. Okay. The, you leave a, a small dwarven poo in the middle of the path, I guess. Lovely. <laughs> okay, meanwhile, at the back, uh, you hear this commotion going on. You hear the uh, uh, sound of a, a drunken dwarf yelling and the sound of uh, excrement hitting the pavement. Alright, uh... well, that, that didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Why oh. can a drug dwarf not make a fuss when you actually need him to do it? Uh, I think from the sounds of it, he made quite a fuss. How far away are the guards from the fence? The ones at the back? 
Yeah, from us. Our, Probably our like 30 feet because the back is a bit bigger. And maybe more like 40 feet. The back's a bit bigger than the front. And you're kind of off to the side. If you imagine it's like the house is there, the front is there, the back is like there, the guards are there, and you're sort of off to the side here. It's like about 40 feet. Can I take a similar rock to the one I used to wedge the guarding gates at it open and lob it off to the side in a really obvious attempt to uh, make noise? Sure. You pick up the rock and you fling it over the fence. Um, it clatters down on part of the path uh, on the inside and you hear uh, one of the guards uh, in the back be like, huh? And then you like come like you hear the tr tr the sound of like chainmail rustling as he kind of like tr 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 comes down the path, and he's like, "Bloody kids throwing rocks again! Get out there and ch chase them off!" And then you you hear the kind of rustling <laughs> towards the um uh the gate that you are standing by. Crap! Take cover! What the fuck are we doing? I transform into a cat. <laughs> uh, nice. Same same color as no, just because I can. Okay. Um. Siege, what are you doing? One action, quickly. Uh, is there a bush I can hide in? Um, dive towards it? Yeah, across the other side of the path, yes. Okay, so I'm going to dive to the bush. <laughs> stealth. Okay. Yeah! Yep, you slide into the bush. Um, Sir Tristan, your comrade has just thrown a rock over the fence and made a noise. It sounds like a guard's coming. He's then jumped into the nearest bush. Your other comrade has turned into a cat. You're left standing there with Elaine. What would you like no, to do? We didn't, no, we didn't go with this lot. This lot sounded... What they were going to do sounded dangerous and close to breaking Oh, so you were, you were with the shitting we dwarf. Just, we just, you know, we're basically just hanging around in the in the street in front of the house. Okay, but cool. So, the rest none of you... It's not a rocket, sir. So, where you, from where you are, you're standing in the corner, I guess. You can kind of see this going on, and you can see uh, Tazros taking a dump in the guy's porch, basically. Um, and then the gate... The guard gets to the gate and it pulls the gate open and sticks there. He's like, "Kids, fuck off!" And then he closes. Meow. And he, he sees the cat and, he's like, <sighs> and he just goes in and he's like, turns back. He's like, "Was this gate supposed to be open?" And you hear a voice back like, "No, oh, just lock it." And he's like, "Oh fuck's sake!" And he gets a big ring out and he's like, <laughs> locks the gate and then <laughs> back up the path. After about twenty seconds, you hear the sound of a rock clattering into the street. Fuck. <laughs> well, that didn't work. Clearly, uh, the rock that I tried to throw over to the side of the house magically landed in the middle of the path and caused all this to happen. Great. Okay. Uh, any further ideas? Do we wait until it's darker and the guard maybe changes? There's less of them around? Or thoughts? At this point, I'm uh, fresh out of ideas. Do I join the group again? Sure, you can wander around. Uh, you see... Uh, a cat, and um, that's about it. Oh, well, sorry, um, Sir Tristan is standing in the corner with uh, Elaine. Other than that, there's the Dwarven Pooh, and then there's a cat uh, next to the back gate. Okay, I walk up to the gate, because now I, I, my idea is like, they made it through, because they're gone. That was the whole idea. So I'm now banging on the door, like, let me in! Okay. Uh, the guards will come back down at this point and they'll be like, Round the front, please, round the front. No, but my friends are inside. Uh, who are your friends? I, I mean, the guard of front is my friend because I shake hands with him. Do you want to be my friends? No. Why not? Because I'm not interested in being your friend, dwarf. Why not? I'm just not. Now, I have, I'm working. If you have business with Mr. Zamont, please go to the front gate. Otherwise, please leave this gate alone. I, otherwise, are, are you throwing rocks? No, but I can. No, it's all right. I don't need any more rocks. Can, uh, um, does Machian take sounds to cast? Um, let's find out. I can't remember. Mage. And? Uh, it's both the verbal and semantic. Verbal and semantic, yeah. And unless you're oh, a shit. sorcerer with um, uh, this, you can cast spells quietly um, as part of a sorcerer perk, which you don't have. So you would okay. be casting this in a bush next to him. So you'd, you'd imagine 
it'd be obvious to you if you tried to cast a spell that requires uh, verbal um, components right next to a guard while you're hiding in a bush, he would probably hear it. Okay, I don't. Not saying you can't. Then. You can certainly try. Uh, the, the guard still standing there. Uh, yeah, he's standing there. He's wa he's watching you, waiting for you to leave. Um, how about this? I will bring you ill. We can be friends, and I can meet my friends. Listen, dwarf. Like, no offense, but I can't be caught taking drinks on a uh, on when I'm working. You know, like I appreciate it, but. If you got a business, please head round the front. Otherwise, I really must ask you to step away. But you're not working. You're talking to me. Yes, this is part of my work. Anyway, as I mentioned, um, I need to get back to work. Please. And he sort of turns and he walks off. Okay. I walk, like, 20 feet distance. Uh, the gate's closed now, right? I yes, you locked it. Yeah. All right. Yes, I want to head first into the gate because I want to meet my friends. You run headfirst oh, into the gate, did you say? Yeah. Run straight towards the gate, head first. I want to go to the other side. Okay. Um, roll a strength, please. Straight. No, athletics, please. This is an athletic move. Just, you could. Fantastic. You um, charge. With your with your bare chest straight towards this uh, gate that the, the guards just uh, walked away from, and you barrel into it with such force, you leave a almost imperceptible dent to the iron gate. Uh, surprisingly enough, uh, you did make a dent in it. It's very impressive. Everyone who see, sees it in the future will be like, "That was made by a a head of a dwarf." Uh, however. Dwarven heads are notoriously not as strong as wrought iron gates, uh, so it hurts, it hurts, and you take 1d6 uh, bludgeoning damage from that one. 4 bludgeoning damage, uh, and you're a little bit dazed. I was already dazed because I was drunk still, so... Maybe it stacks, maybe you're double dazed. Mm. While all this is going on, uh, I'll attempt to see if I can find a hole I can squeeze through. Oh yeah, as a cat. Oof, no problem. Straight through. And then I'll go looking for snow. It's still in the bush that um, she was talking to you from. I'll walk into the bush and hide together with her. Still as a cat. Snow okay. does not realize that this is Hazara, so she pets the cat and is really excited. The cat looks very angry at the uh, snow. I pat its little head and I whisper, Good kitty. Who's a good kitty? The cat leaves the bush. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then I go scouting around the house. Uh, yeah. Uh, trying to gather all sorts of into the... Uh, my little yeah. kitty eyes can I see. No one, no one is... Um, uh like bothered about a cat wandering through the grounds it's at the edge of a, a town there's plenty of cats um so you do you wander through the garden it's, it's a nice garden it's well maintained there's a, a couple of other guards uh down at the, bo the bottom of the garden next to uh, another gate um and there's um from where you are you can see through some of the the windows uh, with your lower vantage points kind of hard to see into the the building um, but the, the drapes are still open. Uh, it looks very nice inside. There's like sort of a candelabra hanging from the ceiling uh, with a bunch, bunch all lit. Um, and you can see like shadows moving, um, like perhaps from lights that are, lights that are lower down as people are wandering by. Um, one area with your keen scent um, of smell, uh, it looks like it's the, uh, the kitchen. Um, the windows are sort of open and you can smell like cooking stuff coming through, the, through that. So there are six guards in total? That you can see, yes. Okay, yeah. And how many entrance uh, doors are there to the house? So there's the main entrance at the front, um, and there's the uh, entrance at the back that the two guards were on in the porch. And around the side, uh, looks like another entrance that kind of like, opens up to like a cellar. You know those doors that are like, like that, and they open out? It looks like a cellar entrance. Okay, is the cellar entrance uh, guarded? It's not guarded. Can I see if it's uh, locked? 
from where you are, it's um, hard to tell. It just says two handles on the outside. Well, hopefully it's something Siege can uh, handle. So I make my way back to him, just pass by the bush and attempt to just uh, snow to follow. Okay, I'd like uh, Mizir, the person, to uh, demonstrate what a cat gesturing someone to follow looks like. <laughs> Let me think for a moment. That seems like that. Like cats sometimes <laughs> just... And I point towards uh, the gate. Okay, so, um, Snow, this cat wanders up to you and sort of like flaps its paws a little bit like that at you and then points itself towards um, a gate. So, being a cat person, Snow recognizes that cats normally don't do this. So, she kind of gets confused, but not really catching the hint. So, she looks at the gate and then looks back at the cat and then looks at the gate and then looks at the cat. Um, do it, does Snow see siege at all or know where siege is? Uh, not at the moment. Siege so had jumped into a bush the last you, you heard, and you're hiding in a bush on the other side of the fence, so you can't get a good vantage of what's going on. Okay. So, I'm rather confused, but I'm keeping an eye on the cat in the gate, because something's clearly off. Okay. Uh, I walk out again. Okay, you can do, no problem. And then I find Siege and uh, go back to my normal form. See, so just cat walks up in front of you and turns into uh, Hosanna, the person that you met this oh, morning. Jesus! What? The... Oh, okay. Hi. What? Well, frankly, I didn't expect to see a fucking cat turn into a person. I. It's pretty weird, but impressive nonetheless. You didn't see when I turned into the cat? No, I was diving into a fucking bush. Did you just expect me to disappear? I don't know what you're capable of, Lassie. Earlier on you started glowing and having all sorts of star effects and then using like arrows made of light. I don't know what you you did. Uh, anyways, I gathered some intel. There's a third way into the house. Uh, uh, of course there is. Okay. A way, way into the cellar and there's no one guarding it. Right, okay. Did you see snow on the way? I've not noticed her move. Uh, she's gliding in the bush. Ah, I tried, Christ. tried to make her come out, but she seems right. to like that bush. Okay, okay. So, uh, bear with me one second. I'm going to check my inventory. Uh, also, I noticed that there are two more guards outside, so we have six in total. Okay, so... I am going to, using one of my daggers, uh, take a copper piece from my uh, my pouch, and I'm going to uh, 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 I'm gonna like very crudely try and carve an S into it for snow. Okay. Um, and then I'm gonna turn to Hazana, and I'm gonna say, Hazana, that was really impressive. Can you take this back to Snow with in your cat form and Hold it in your mouth and try and get it to follow you and lead it round to the gate and I'll go around and pick it, okay? So I have to give it to her? No, no, then... no, no. Keep it in your mouth, try and get it to follow you. I tried that. What is the coin going to do? Well, it's carved with a fucking S in it. You'd think you should notice something about that. Yeah, many coins could be carved with an S. Yeah, but why would a random cat have a have a coin with an S in it and go up and bug this person persistently. I can try it. I don't have any paper or anything to write on, so I don't have many other options. But but I can't just change forms like someone changes their head. Well, I it's... don't know that, do I? No, but... Like... Are they... Are they... Are they talking loud enough near the bush that Snow would hear, or no? <laughs> I bet um... they hope so. Give, give, me a, arguing in the backyard. Give, give me a perception, <laughs> perhaps. Uh, if, if you're listening out for, for this while you're in the bush, which would make sense, give me a perception. Yeah, so you hear them arguing, uh, just like, 
something something about a cat and a coin in its mouth. Like you can't really make it out because it's uh, you're in a bush and it's kind of muffled. But it, you recognise the sound of uh, two of your compatriots uh, basically bickering, but you're not really sure what. All you get is it's something to do with a cat and a coin. So fine, I'll do it. Then so I transform as, into a cat and drop the coin. As they're as they're discussing this, Snow pokes her head out, kind of in their general direction, and goes, "Hey, hey, you guys!" And meows a little to see to try and get their attention. You guys so hearing, hear, we can hear that. Okay, yeah, you can right. Hear so hearing that, I, I'm, like I'm before, going to, I'm going to meow back at her. Oh, you've already transformed. I was going to say before you transformed, but bugger, that doesn't happen. Yeah, too late. <laughs> okay, um, so I'm going to look down at Hazana. <laughs> snigger slightly then just point uh, at the cat and um like you know give like a, a hate symbol with my hands um which hopefully she recognizes Hazana um and then move I'm gonna point to myself and move off down the get down the garden so she'll obviously guess well I'd hope she guessed that something is up <laughs> so you see uh, this, your uh, siege pointing um at the cat and then making symbols with his hands okay um are they moving? Are you guys moving away from the gate that I'm near? Yeah, so yeah. I yeah, so I'm going to make a H in common and then I'm going to move uh past the gate and down around the wall to uh moving slowly being aware there's guards and trying to keep an eye out of things and then try and find the next gate and pick that. Okay. Um that gate you can find it's around the back. Um there's two guards standing directly on the inside of it. On the inside of the fence, uh, like within the grounds. Yeah, directly in front of the gate. Oh, in front of the gate on the outside, yeah. In the inside, they're behind the, the gate. They're, they're standing right, there. okay. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> given, <laughs> g- yeah, given the gate is, or given the fence is like iron railings, I'll be able to see them as I moved up. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you saw them. Okay, so given that the gate is uh, guarded, I'm going to uh, <laughs> double back and uh, try and get back to where. Uh, uh, Snow and Hazana were. Yep, no problem. So, uh... Um. <laughs> so ho- yes. hopefully... Go on. I was gonna say, so Snow sees the siege walk away and then come back and goes, Hey, are you gonna get in this gate yet? We gotta get in, right? Who's that so, cat? There's a problem, Lassie. The cat is Hazana. So... Oh, hi, Hazana! <laughs> you look cute! So there's a problem. <laughs> The other gate has two guards on the inside. Well, if pick you... this one! It's sneak in! Yeah, I've already tried picking it, and there's two guards looking straight at the gate. Well, then jump the fence! You I tried that another... before and damaged my demon sausage, so I don't mind if I don't want to do that again. Well, try again! Arzana can get in, why can't you get in? Because I'm not a fucking cat. I'm so a you... six foot tall teeth with want... horns. Do you want me and Arzana to get in? We can try it. See if you can get in, see if you can talk to this guy and see if you can get him to come out to the gate. So tell him you've got a business proposition. I don't know. Just get him out somehow because we are struggling to get into this place. Okay. So uh, Snow motions to Horzana to come in to try and see if they can figure out a way to get into the house. Okay. Well, I, I'll go towards uh, that uh, entrance to the cellar. Mm-hmm. Try and get Snow to follow me and try and find a way that involves that makes it easy for Snow to stay hidden. Yeah, Snow right. Snow tries. I don't know if she needs stealth out based on where the guards are sitting, but she kind of sneakily follows uh, Harzana. Yeah, so you will need to roll stealth to make your way across the garden. And you can do so with the grace and stealthiness of a cat. Uh, Harzana doesn't need to roll anything because she's just a cat. Um, but... Hosanna makes her way around the side of the, the building where the, the cellar entrance is, and Snow, you manage to make your way across the garden. There's like the, the guards at the top and the guards at the bottom, but with the with the shadows and some trees and bushes, you kind of like like sleek between them all and make your way across the garden um, with nary a sound, and you're there by the cellar entrance. All right, so I see the cellar entrance. I gently try to open it to see if it's locked. So it opens. It is not locked. All right, I I leave it open, and I motion for Harzana to go in. I'm assuming cellars aren't like creepy in this at all, right? Like they would keep like wine barrels or something down there. That's an assumption that Snow and or Rain can make. Okay, Rain's gonna make that assumption. So she sneaks down into the cellar, motioning for Harzana to follow her. Yeah, jump inside. 
Okay, so you go down into the cellar. It's really dark. Um, you have dark vision, don't you, Snow? Uh, yeah, I think so. Let me double check. And cats, I believe, have dark vision as well. Um, so it, it, in in the gloom, you can see uh, like stacks of uh, barrels and things like that. It looks like your average cellar. There's nothing too extravagant. There's a couple of barrels, a couple of sacks of potatoes and bread and flour and the, the standard things. There's some like linen piles and stuff like that. And then there's a staircase that goes up to a door which is closed. Um. So I sneak up the stairs and I. Can, is there is it. Is there a window on the door or anything like that? No. I slowly turn the handle and open it ever so slightly to see if I hear or see anything. Okay, perception. I'll try and uh, look as well. Mm -hmm. Perception, so two little cat heads look around the corner of this door. Um, so, Hazana, it looks like this opens up into um, like the kitchen area. Um, there's some sounds of like a pot bubbling like just gently um but you can't hear or see anything or anyone else i crawl inside so you're going through into the house uh snow what are you doing um noticing that harzana goes first i creep after her and i let knowing that it's easier to explain a cat getting into the house like my whole strategy in snow's mind is that oh her cat broke in so she's chasing her cat Versus she's breaking in and the cat's following her. So she kind of lets Harzana lead. Okay. Um, stealth, please, from Snow. So you you step through and you, you creep out into the, the kitchen and like you're like looking around. There's no one around and you hear the like, as the door closes behind you, uh, it makes a makes a snick as it, as it latches. And... Um, you're standing in the kitchen. Um, there is, looks like the middle of something being prepared. There's like some vegetables that are like cut. There's a pot boiling. There's uh, like a, a like a fire pit with nothing on it yet. Um, that's what you see. Do I hear any movement throughout the house, like an upstairs or voices or anything? Uh, perception again, please. Yes. So you hear um, the sound of people walking around upstairs. Um, you hear the sound of uh, conversation in another room. Uh, which So where you are in the kitchen, there seems to be like a, a doorway that leads to a, another room. Um, and that's where a lot of the conversation seems to be coming from. You can't make any of it out. You just hear the murmured voices. Is there another way out of the kitchen, not through that door? Mm -hmm. Yes, so there's the back door, which leads out to the... Um, uh, the what's it called the the porch that those two guards were standing on and then uh there's a looks like a hallway which goes along towards you can see like the front door right at the end of the hallway and there's a room off to the right of it which is the other entrance to the uh the room with the um the, the conversation coming from and you can just about see looks like another room at the front and then some stairs going up to the side okay so let me summarize that there's a room with all the people the back mm -hmm. door with the guards is there a third room or was that um, you can you can beyond. see a door to another room that kind of at the front of the house. So it looks like the the kitchen is at the back. There's another room there which sounds the sound is coming from. And there's another room in front of it probably because you can see up this corridor here. Oh, so I'll take that corridor that nobody is coming through. Mm -hmm. All right, so I I'll motion to Harzana to go first down that way, and like to kind of scout it out, and then I'll follow her trying to get around to see like to see if i can recognize the voices of the people talking like if they're just like the help or whatever or if it sounds like more authoritative which would probably be yorg so you want to hazana go yeah i'll uh, go through the rooms uh, scout them there uh, one by one okay so um the first room that as you come to the door is open um and you can see into it, there's maybe like half a dozen people uh, sitting around the table. Uh, there's like glasses of wine in front of them, and they seem to be in conversation. Um, are you continuing? Are you going into that room? Or are you going along the corridor? Uh, when I see the people, I'll turn around and go back to snow. Uh, would be very easy if snow could speak cat. <laughs> Can I? Yeah, I don't think I speak cat. So Snow looks at Harzana, pats on the head and goes, Harzana, 
Is it safe? Sit down if it's yes, that it's safe. St keep standing if it's not safe. I stay standing. Oh no, Harzana! <laughs> Um, and then I did I get a count of how how many in there? Um, from from the vantage point that you were at, just looking through the edge of the door, um, you counted the, the about six people sitting around the table, but you couldn't see the whole room. Uh, I'll try and draw with my paw into the ground, like the number six. Um, Snow kind of gets it. She either realizes you're drawing a six or a nine. In either case, that's a lot of people. So, um, uh, so she kind of panics. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so, Harzana, Harzana, what if you run in there and I'll pretend I lost you and then maybe Yorg's in there and we can try to talk to him. Do you think that would work? Stay standing for no, sit down for yes. I stay standing. Oh no, Harzana, what are we supposed to do? Can I cast Shrug? Cast what? Can I cast I... Shrug? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I look up. Like up towards the ceiling. We should call upstairs? How do we get up the stairs? I look at snow. <laughs> uh, then so, I try and sneak out in the hallway, see if there's a stair there. So there is a staircase in the hall you can see from where you are. Um, you would have to like cross that uh, that doorway uh, that's open to that room to get to it. You can see that quite clearly. Uh, I'll try and go into the uh, room again and see if there's anyone that could possibly be a uh, drake. Okay, so you're going to walk into the room. Yes, through the door. Yeah. Okay, uh, so you do. Um, give me a, a, a stealth. Uh, so I'm a cat, so that's, I got a plus four. Um, so, so fourteen instead. Uh... You walk into the room. So it's fourteen. You walk into the room, yeah. and um, a to the side, um, uh, the front of the room, uh, a small girl uh, looks up and sees you, and she's like, "Kitty!" And she comes running over, and all the adults sort of turn and look, and the little girl runs over and goes to pick you up. I'm not. Uh... Make that cat and then I'll run out the hallway and uh, run away, but not into the kitchen because that's where snow is. Okay, so you go to the other side towards the the, the stairs. Uh, so you hear a voice being like, "Someone get that cat out of here!" And the, the little girl's like, "No, kitty!" Snow, you hear someone shouting uh, about a cat, and you hear footsteps um, coming towards the hallway. Snow panics and uh, starts. <laughs> she starts calling, Harzana, Harzana, where'd you go? Harzana, like pretending as though she had just lost her cat. You hear the, the sound of like chairs sliding back, and then like people appear in the hallway and they look up at you, and they're just like they're they're surprised. They're they're very shocked to see you, and then uh, some of them are like uh, they'll look around, and someone just goes guards, 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 and then the back door. Uh, opens and the two guards in the back uh, like one of them comes in the other one stays out there and then uh, yeah the, 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 the guy heads towards you and then uh, a man in the front's like get this cat person there's another cat in here as well get her get them both out of here right now who the snow, fuck are you snow puts her hands up and goes hi my name is snow I'm from Amamake I, I don't give a shit why the fuck are you in my house my cat got in why is your search her <laughs> search her right now and then one of the guards comes over and sort of puts his hand on your shoulder and then another one comes uh, from upstairs you're coming down and he comes over and they start like going through your belongings um and they like take your dagger they're like what the fuck are you doing are you trying to are you have one of them are you a fucking cat thief what no i 
was helping people. Do you know Lorenzo? I was on his farm helping kill some rats. That's why I have knives. I don't why give a shit. Crazy? I don't give a shit. What the fuck are you doing in my house? My cat got in here. Who are you? This is my fucking house. Yeah, who are you? None of your fucking business. Now, guards, deal with this. And they, they like, walk you, like, firmly, hand on shoulder, like, towards the front door. Um, Herzana, the one coming down the stairs, uh, is, is saw you when you ran that way. Um, he's going to try and grab you as you, if you're going to try and go past going up the stairs, or what, what would you like to do? I'll try and, uh, go up the stairs uh, while touching his attempt to grab me. Okay, so that would be a, uh, acrobatics, please, contested. So you, you, you slither past this guy, you know, it's like trying to pick up a cat that doesn't want to be picked up, it's like, fucking come here, and um, you run up the stairs, uh, and you hear the, the sounds of, like, doof, 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 as he comes running after you. Meanwhile, Snow, uh, you've been marched to the front door, they open the door, they walk you out to the, the front gate, they open the gate, and then the guy shoves you hard. Dexterity saving throw, please. Life and you, you you go you just go bang like Family Guy style fall like straight poof, like one frame from uh, from vertical to horizontal and you slide along the ground from the force of this guy's push uh, and you, you you when you get up you smell something very weird and you look down and your fur is brown uh, and you've got like this like brown smear down uh, your your white fur. I like turn around and scream. What the heck? I didn't even do anything. You guys stole my cat. Where's my cat? I'm calling the town guards! Where's my cat? Fuck off, they say, and they just close the, the gate. Fucking cat people, and then they go and close the door, and like the two guards at the, at the front were just like, looking a bit surprised, and um, they, they're just like, they look very angry at you now, like, as in, you know, they were supposed to keep you out, and somehow you got in anyway. And they know they're going to be in trouble later, and that's the kind of look that's on their face. Alright. Where's the rest me of my party? Me Wait, meanwhile... It's well, there's a dwarf uh, sitting on the opposite side of the um, uh, the, the road from you. Uh, okay. Hosanna, you've made it up to the, the, the landing. There's a guard coming up after you. I will try and scout as many rooms as I can before I get caught. So the first room that you run past, uh, it's, the door is a bit open. It looks like a bedroom. The next one looks like another bedroom. Uh, a couple of closed doors and there's another room that's uh, slightly open. It looks like a, like a study or an office or something. I'll go over the study slash office room. Okay, so you go in that one and it's got like a big ornate desk and a bunch of like bookcases and things like that. And there's a man uh, sitting at the desk, um, like holding a, like a piece of paper or something like that next to uh, a pouch. And he looks up as uh, as this cat runs in, followed very closely behind by a, a guard. And the guard like skids to stop and he's like, Mr. DeMont, sir, um, sorry. And he comes in and he goes to pick you up again. So that's another road. Um, if if you want to not be picked up, then yes, it'd be contested athletics. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, acrobatics, yes, sorry. Uh, so again, he goes to lift you up, and you are able to square him out. Um, and the, the guard's like, very sorry, Mister Demont. And um, where are you running? Because he's going to try and corner you now. Well, I'll try and see if there's anything I can quickly spot within the room that might be interesting to us, and then I'll make it out of it and uh, downstairs. Uh, give me a perception then with disadvantage, because you're um, one, low, and two, being chased by a guard, and three, um, you don't have very much time. You don't spot anything that looks like it could be of immediate use. The guard has now like cornered you at this point, and he's got like his hands out, and he is ready to like try and grab you. Right, then I'll just leg it and uh, get out as fast as possible. So another um, contested acrobatics, but this time at disadvantage because he's got you in the corner and it's like really ready for you this time. Fuck. <laughs> uh, he rolled poorly as well, but not as poorly as you. Uh, so as you go to dart by, his uh, his hands like whoop, grab you firmly uh, round like the just under the rear legs and like under the the front as well, and he pins you against his body, and he, he's like fucking come on, very sorry, Mister Demont, and uh, 
man it sort of looks like over these like sort of like spectacles at the guard and then goes back to reading uh, this piece of parchment in front of him and the guard carries you down stairs uh, goes opens the front door and just fucking throws you out onto the street I continue my act and act like I'm really scared cat so I just leg it out on the street okay Meanwhile, also to escape the ultimate humiliation, humiliation, which is that little girl. <laughs> Meanwhile, um, Siege and Sir Tristan and uh, Tazros and um, Elaine, you witness the the violent papping out of your colleague Snow and a cat uh, in front of the building. What are you doing? Would I have seen that given I was at the back? Um, good question. Probably not. You probably would have heard the yelling from uh, inside okay. the house uh, when uh, the snow <laughs> was Thrown yelling. Out the front door. Uh, yeah, and and then you probably would have heard the sounds of like the front door being opened and like snow yelling uh, when she landed flat in the fair enough. Flat okay, in Taz so... Ross's poo. <laughs> <laughs> so hearing the commotion, yeah, I'd have uh, made my way around to the uh, the front then um, after all this had happened. Okay. The guys are watching you, they're like, I suggest you all just fucking leave, alright? If you want to come back in the morning, maybe, maybe Mr. DeMont will speak to you, but I... Anything else, any more of this, whatever this is, we'll be calling the guard, and you'll be spending tonight in a cell. Y'all right. like me, I'm not calling the guard, since you almost stole my cat. <laughs> I pet, and then I pet Harzana and cat for him. The guards just laugh at you and they'll be like, listen, you might want to go find a, a fucking bath before you start arguing with people again. I take some of this shit and I throw it at him. <laughs> ranged attack, please. Oh, I don't know if I have something for ranged attack. Uh, you're not proficient in poo, so it would just be a... <laughs> simple weapon. Uh, is, it, is there simple ranged weapons? Uh, it would just be d20 plus dex. My dex is 12, is it 3? Uh, 12, it should be 1. Plus 1, yep. Yeah. Oh, plus 1. Oh, perfect! Um, let me check the what a guard's AC is. Meets it, beats it. Uh, you successfully hit the man with poo. I hope you're proud of yourself. Yes, I am. <laughs> um, he looks disgusted, he's like, Ugh! and he like, pulls out a rag out and he's like, cleaning himself. They're like, fuck off, please! One of them's like, not fucking paid enough for this shit. Literally. Alright. Uh, Snow Given. turns. Yeah. Shirts to the party. Alright, what next, team? Snow stinks, so, by the way. I'm gonna glance down at Snow look at the pile of poo in the middle of the path and try and figure out where it came from um but i'm not gonna be too offended by it because you know it's poo and i come from a farm uh and then i'm just gonna say well i'm guessing since you're out here that didn't go too well so uh trying to go back to the inn and um we'll try and get cleaned up and have a think about this you mean drink some more Yes, Taz. Drink some more, because that's clearly made you useful this evening. I mean, I don't have to get in now anymore. You guys are here. Yeah, th th thanks for your input, Taz. It, it was uh, absolutely invaluable. You're welcome. So, what does um, Sir, Sir Tristan make of uh, everything that he's just witnessed? You saw everyone kind of going off different directions. You saw a cat running in and out. Then the next thing you know, uh, snow is being thrown out through a dwarf poo, and then a cat comes out shortly after. It starts throwing shit everywhere. <laughs> well, I, I asked if they found the guy, and they ignored me in favour of talking about shit and beer. So, I guess this mission was a complete wash. 
Well, once we get clear from the house, like where we where we far away from it, I will revert back to element form. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm just glad I'm not sleeping where they are. And so it didn't get go quite as expected, but I did find him. He's upstairs in the. He has a study. That's also, I think it must be his family that was downstairs eating dinner. I got chased by his daughter. That was very unpleasant. Uh, I appreciate it nonetheless. Um, well, he's probably not going to be in this study when we turn, uh, if we turn back up tomorrow, if we turn back up later, but uh, it's good to know, I guess. So what are you doing? But I think if we're going to return again, we should probably not have snow with us. That would be yeah. too suspicious. Well, we could cover her in some more poo and there should be a brown cat and they wouldn't recognize that. Oh my god. He says jokingly. <laughs> like, let's go back and just clean up and we can have dinner. Yeah, I'm, re I'm in favor of that after... What's happened today I could do with uh, winding down. Yeah. So you're heading back towards the broken drum. Yep. Okay. Yeah, you, you can do. Um, it's it's still pretty busy. Um, it's probably about sort of like ten o'clock now, ten thirty by the time you you get there. Um, and um, it's it's sort of winding down. Like it's been a long day with a lot of drinking, so people are like actually tired from it. Um, so there's a couple of people passed out and snoring and so on uh, Galinde is still working hard but she she looks tired as well she's, she's definitely slower uh, than she was last time you saw her um, the, the dwarven man's not there uh, the young boy Jonah is still there he looks run off his feet he still he looks really tired uh, they see you come in and they just sort of like, like raise their hand and sort of welcoming and just gesture like to, to a seat um, for Snow Tazros and um uh, Siege, you guys still have your accommodation booked uh, from, from the previous night, um, so you still have your various keys, or at Siege you still have the spot for your for your hammock. Um, what would you guys like to do? I was going to go wash up. Yep. So Snow can head upstairs uh, to the, the shower room, um, or the, the, sorry, the wash room, um, which you, you, you know to, um, to exist. Uh, let me just... I will pop... Um, actors for um, Harzana and to Tristan there so that you can see um, so yeah so Snow heads off uh, to the to the top of this room up here which I'm pinging which um, you guys uh, who've stayed there previously know to be uh, the, the washroom um, Tazros your room um, as before uh, is this one I think I'm pinging? Yeah, and but Snow, you won't make it. Yeah, Snow, you're staying in this one. Taz, are you downstairs drinking still then? Uh, he will probably grab one drink, like, if he sees like, um, like a... I don't know, something which still has some bits of ale in it, just chucks it down. Mind like every day he walks up, and then he walks, like... Towards this room, but like he sees the green couch and just <laughs> decides that's that's good enough for today and just passes on it. Nice. Uh, so Snow, you're cleaning up. Uh, Siege, uh, you see uh, your dwarven compatriot uh, passed out on a couch outside his room. I'm going to head down to the main bar and get something to eat and a quick drink. Um, and I'm also going to see if I can get Galinda's attention just quickly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you can. You can easily get her attention. Okay. Um, what I'd like to ask her is just... Um, this... Uh, oh, is his name going? Hang on. Uh, this Yog de Mont, um, local merchant, do you know what he trades in? Um, I'm trying to get to see him, but not having much luck. Uh, I'm pretty sure yeah, Yorg trades in anything and uh, everything. To be honest, anything that makes money, he's involved in. Did you do any business with him at all? Uh, I mean, we have done passing business in the past. Sometimes he's uh, supplied some bits and pieces for the inn. Uh, nothing 
uh, we're not in regular business with them or anything like that, but it's almost impossible to um, not be in business with uh, Jorg de Mont in some way in uh, in Lashkai, to be honest. Do you know if there's anyone locally who does regular business with them that I could talk to? Oh, pff, I, honestly, I couldn't tell you. You'd have to ask around. Uh, most people will probably tell you they've done business with him. Uh, like I say, everyone has. He's, uh, you know... He owned a lot of the, the properties around as well, like buys up some farms every now and then, you know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one last question then, because I know you're a busy lady and I appreciate your time. Um, is there anything, what did you last buy from him? Uh, I think we got some uh, some of the, the beds uh, were shipped in by by him for me. I think it's the last time we bought them. I'm not really sure. Uh, he might have delivered some uh, some supplies like you know food and, and drink sometime i don't really know not me that handles that to be honest uh who would handle it then uh that would be me husband um avamir avamir do you know where he is at the moment uh well he's probably out um enjoying the fruit of a hard day at the festival uh sampling his own product shall we say <laughs> I know what you mean. Uh, I'll appreciate your time. Thank you very much. I'll just uh, enjoy this. Um, Sir Tristan and Herzana. Oh, Sir Tristan, what would you like to be doing while this is going on? Um, eating is good. Otherwise, I was I was content to wait until the morning and go back to the house anyway, but. You know, any any amount of time killing is fine. Yep. So you can just uh, kill time. That's fine. Um, you know that the others who are staying here, and if you were with them, uh, you saw um, uh, Tazros pass out uh, on the couch outside of a, a room with an open door. Both Ms., uh, both uh, Hazana and uh, Tristan and Elaine noticed that. There's also um, where uh, Siege pointed out he was staying, up here, which is a, a room where you can just like string a hammock or uh, put a bed roll down. So, what do you think about today? Well, I suppose if he's paid for the room and not using it. Uh, but, uh, what do you think about these people we... Uh... We encountered. So I yeah, expected it to be a calm day with maybe some rats to deal with, and suddenly we all over the place, getting bitten, being involved in uh, the harvest festival, and trying to infiltrate the house of the demon trader. Yeah, I, I definitely think these people can't be trusted or relied on, but. They do have useful abilities for us for now, and we do need to solve this uh, demon trading thing. I'm going to quickly point out to Elaine that uh, rule 14 in our uh, in our tenets of chivalry is to persevere to the end in any enterprise begun. Uh, so we will be dealing with this demon trader before we head out to the cathedral. Yeah. Might have been the best idea. We just waited for the morning and asked nicely if we could talk with him. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, don't, I, don't I had think it's reasonable. The man didn't want to do business in the middle of the night. Well, it looked like he was working, but yes. It's reasonable, I think. So, are you oh. all kind of turning in for the night type thing, or do you still want to do anything else? I still have one more thing I want to talk with, mm -hmm. Tristan. So did you remember that fortune teller lady? She drew the... Uh, the Gauss uh, card. Yeah. She drew it twice, actually. It's also the first card I draw, drew when I uh, saw you. So she didn't draw it twice, though, eh? She uh, drew... Geros once, um, then she drew, um, you would know this because uh, of your background, uh, but she drew um, Chetso, which is one of the six demons of Gu, um, the one that's associated with Geros, uh, Chetse, who's a demon of uh, aggressive uh, aggression and violence. That's basically the same, the same card. 
It's very similar, yeah. The mummy card and the daddy card. Yeah, it's like a sort of god and demigod almost. But this might be concerning if you keep drawing that card for you. An unshakable fate. But it can't necessarily be entirely bad, surely? It's not like Doom or anything. No, cards aren't entirely good or bad. But uh, How much? giving our tendency to attract violence sure. and uh, frequent occurrence of that card for you, then I can say that we are into a lot of trouble in the future. And you will get some more nasty runes to your collection. So, anything else you want to do before you turn in? And um, where would you like to sleep tonight? I'll sleep in can... here. I guess I'll sleep in here. I'll sit down on the sofa and uh, meditate. Okay. Then yes, you can uh, you can easily do just that, and that is where we will end tonight's session. So thank you very much, everybody, for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed um, the vision of rain being thrown through dwarven poo, because I know I did. Um, oh my gosh! <laughs> Perfect. It was the perfect opportunity to roll uh, a, uh, a one. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, I'm going to. Uh, I think I'm just going to send you all over to uh, talking and stations who are live now, uh, so you can all say hello from us. Uh, I've been Ethica Hawk. Um, I've been joined by uh, an amazing group of people: uh, Rathan Domitras, aka Geeky Cor uh, Decorum on uh, Twitter, Dwagon Omer. Uh, uh, Mizir, uh, myself, uh, Disc Reader, aka Kyle, and of course Chocolate Rain uh, as Snow. Uh, we'll see you hopefully next week. Um, and yeah, have a good evening. And remember, don't land in Dwarven Poo. Night, folks. Hi, guys. Uh. Hell yeah. That was so much fun. That was so fun to watch. <laughs> That's oh, so I good. I didn't expect to laugh this like much.